Hello. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. I'm turning off this <laughs> crash music. How is everybody doing today? On Happy the Fritter Friday. It's Sunday, though. <laughs> Happy, <laughs> Happy, Whoop Happy Whooper Celebration Sunday. Yeah. There we go. That's, that's a Sunday better. I can get behind. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and so thank you all for joining us on this lovely Sunday for Good Morning Source Gaming, episode 51. Joining me, Nantenjex, today is Colin. Hi. Triss. Hello. And our special guest for this week is the lovely Nintendarm. Hello, everybody. And so, yeah, we're all here to talk about a number of things, um, all about Nintendo's crazy wild ride. But before we get to any of that, um, let's talk about, you know, how we're all doing and what, uh, what games we've been playing going on right now. So, has everyone had a good Sunday so far? I know for, obviously, Colin and Trish, you guys, it's the uh, morning. <laughs> but at the very yeah. least for Darn, he's on my sort of level of we're in the mid-afternoon right now. <laughs> um, we're clo I'm at the close end of the afternoon. It's like 4.30, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's 3.30 for me. That time zones, how do they work? So... <laughs> <laughs> But how about you guys? You have have a good night's sleep, having a good, nice little breakfast as you sit here in Good Morning Source Gaming. I'm 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 chowing down right the fuck now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got my my big bagel sandwich, and I'm just you know oh. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm taking a bite of that gamer juice. You know I'm, I'm you know I'm getting ready to. Are are, 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 you, are you implying you're eating a, a a bagel sandwich and drinking like Mountain Dew or something? <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, okay. Let's be real. At this point, like, where th there has to be like a gamer breakfast supplement at some point. Like, th like somewhere in the world, someone has already had to like concoct like, yeah, it's, it's like it's like an orange Julius to to the fucking max. I think that's just called orange juice. <laughs> it, it's it's got to have some gamer branded thing slapped it's, on front, like Master like, Chief uh, chugging one down on the. It needs to be gamer rated. <laughs> it's, it's it's orange juice, but it has like guarana in it, so it just like it gets that like adrenaline pumping, so, and you're like, you can see every one forty four I mean, FPS. And outside of me playing video games, I'm more of a jazz and soul person, so I just like to relax when I wake up. Thank you very much. <laughs> But the high octane gamer energy. See, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna exudes. wake up the way that Pink Floyd's The Wall starts with like in the flesh, like just no, no breaks, just, just like power rock. <laughs> and I'm just from screaming out my wall. window. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't uh. sound great to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> different it's, strokes it's, for it's, different it's... blokes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Uh. <laughs> But all Could right. you? <laughs> I just go to Dunkin' Donuts and I'm like, so ya, such ya. I mean, I mean, like to I mean if, to if you show. if you want Game Fuel that bad, it's called G Fuel. So <laughs> <laughs> uh. actually, see, I, it, it's funny. I actually see that now in gaming stores that they're selling G Fuel oh over here. God. But yeah. there actually, unironically, is a Mountain Dew uh, uh, gamer juice. Like, yeah, not, not 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 just. <laughs> But not just like game fuel. They have one that's I, I I forget the name of it, but it's like it's it's meant like for the gamers. Okay, to the so, point that yeah. they actually put um they, they actually have like a uh texture. They they added like a weird texture to the can for extra grip. Oh I don't know God. how we got into this conversation, but the thing is, Mountain Dew is very different between Europe and North America. Nintendo actually can attest to this. Yeah, yeah, I found that with a lot of drinks. Oh. Um, even stuff yeah, like we, Fanta we are, is different in are, Europe. The, the sugar <laughs> amount in European Mountain Dew is far less. Far oh, so it's less. better over there, is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think it's. Yeah. I think it's because. Uh, I think it's because like in in the U.S. Mountain Dew now is just like it's advertised as like a really not as good energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that okay. makes sense. I don't want to go in this entire discussion again, but the amount of candy <laughs> bars that are different between the US and Europe and how they are branded is insane. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's, it's for example, we have shock. similar names, like uh, Milky Way exists both in Europe and North America, but they're both completely different candy bars, and in some cases, 
on completely different brands altogether. <laughs> Isn't uh, it, it's it's some it's some weird meme where like I think our three musketeers is called like a Mars bar oh, in uh in, <laughs> in the UK, and then like our Milky Way is like the same as uh, yeah, I think I've heard something that before. else. Yeah, no, I, I, just, I think I think it's I think it's Milky Way is your guys Mars bar. But your Milky Way is more like our Three Musketeers. It's like that's correct, com- that's completely correct. out yeah. the yes. fucking window. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely that's absolutely the case. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Wow, well, go- found a good picture to represent that. I'll slap that on the stream. <laughs> and while, I'm doing- <laughs> while I'm getting those sweets off on screen, uh, what games has everyone been playing recently? Um, as you're the special guest here, Dom, why don't you start? Sure. Um, I've not been playing. Uh, overly much. Um, uh, so uh, first of all, I've been playing a lot of Pikmin Three, but but that's the the previous are not out, so I can talk about that. For <laughs> it wasn't really help with the fact that half of the main story content I can talk about was in the demo that they released <laughs> literally a day before the preview embargo. <laughs> Thanks, Nintendo. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I can um, only additionally talk about uh, the Snow Tundra, which um, I mean it's. It's one of my favorite areas in that game, so I don't really mind. Uh, they've made a lot of interesting changes when compared to the original Pikmin 3. Um, for example, they completely reworked some of the, the groundwork so that newcomers are more guided to where they need to go. Even if they don't use like the hint feature, which is very aggressive and basically gives you Odyssey-like assist arrows to where you next need to go if you press it. Uh, but even if you don't, um, the environments do a far better job of telling you where there is a path for you to wander upon. Um, which, I, honestly, I think that's a great thing. It's a very good thing to do that. Um, in addition to that, I think the most important thing is how they reworked like the, the control system. Because for far too long, I was used to how it played with a reverb mode. Um, and now uses gyro to give you the pointer, similar to other games on Switch. Um, and I still had to resync a lot, but it did work relatively well. Um, and I think it comes down to two specific things. They've now added a lock-on feature, which uh, locks your movement to a certain object in place. So what whatever you do, it just sticks to that object on, until you press B which um, I think is a very important thing and helps you to control the environment very better. Uh, the second thing is they completely changed how they used um, the charge. On Wii U, it was a two-part system. You first have to lock it in place and then press um, X to let everything go to a specific spot. Now you can specifically control which type of Pikmin will attack, and you can instantly press X to immediately send them forward. Um, It completely changes um, the the day-to-day mechanics and the moment-to-moment gameplay, but it goes along far more faster and far more enjoyable in a lot of ways. Um, And I think it also really helps to bring this, like, home for new players who never played this before. Like, they've made active changes to make the Pikmin more welcoming, which... Honestly, I think is a very good thing. Okay. I yeah. think I think that that speaks testament to the fact that Nintendo's been doing better with their uh with their Wii U ports lately. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it definitely totally. seems like there's a lot going into Pikmin 3 that makes it worth getting again, it sounds like, in terms of like actually making the game better. It's not just a straight port with a little bit of extra content. They're actually yeah. reworking core aspects of the game and the mechanics. And that's just like what we've seen of uh, 3D World so far, Super Mario 3D World, where mm-hmm. they like they're outright like changing, <laughs> they're changing like the movement systems <laughs> and physics in the game a bit. That's insane, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other half of it uh, is obviously that they included a now a prologue and an epilogue, and only talk about the prologue. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically more score to death missions. Mm. It's not playing on similar maps that you find in the main story mode. It's just more score attack missions like you would find in the mission mode. Um, 
In fact, they have re. So I don't know if any of you played Pikmin Three before. Yes. Okay. So uh, you would know that if you would play the game once, entire playthrough, mm -hmm. it would unlock you a code that would give you a cutscene of Olimar and Louis in somewhere in the map or yeah. somewhere in the, the game. Yeah. Um, that was so annoying to unlock because you only get one code per game and the rest you would just find online because what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. um, they have now put those cutscenes as part of the prologue. So okay. basically, it are it are a bunch of score tech missions with those cutscenes playing. Okay, then. So it's just huh. that, that, I guess that's a way to get extra content and see them cutscenes without having to go through the trials and tribulations that you had to do before. Yeah, but... I, I, I know there there's a bit of laziness to that, if that makes. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't mind the score tech missions because um, they're the most focused bit of, bit of content. Always, that always been in Pikmin because you have to do everything with a very small time frame. Um, mm. but, but it's weird. It's a it's a weird change that they did. But I, I accept it for what it is. Um, it mm. allows more content to get in that door, and it, it gives you a more reason to play as as Louis and Olimar. So I'm not completely against it, to be frank. Right. Um, but it, it's just a really weird thing. <laughs> a really weird thing. That making um, me wonder what you. If you still unlock the cutscenes as you did in the original game, if they're given so early, or if there's something else now that you potentially yeah, get. I don't know about that. Like I, I, I have the feeling there is not much else. Um, the last thing I want to touch on because it annoys me to death, and I think it <laughs> needs to be addressed. Why the heck is Bingo Mode not online? Is it still not online? That oh, really should no. be. That I, really I thought I thought be. that was one of the things they were adding onto it online. No, they they Bingo Mode is specifically only still local. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, because Bingo Mode is great. Um, but but yeah, big problem with Pikmin Three's multiplayer is it's only local, exclusively. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's fine, I suppose, but it really limits it for a lot of people. Yeah, um, being able to actually and, and enjoy I don't know if, it. If, if everybody saw this in the trailer, who never played Pikmin Three before, but you know, um. Being a mode can get really hectic, and it's a whole lot of fun, especially with item play and the way you approach maps and everything. Yeah, right. Uh, um, but to not make that online is such an odd move because it's literally one of the most fun thing multiplayer things I've played in years, especially on Wii U back in the day, where you had to map just on your gamepad and you would just sit mm. next to one another. It's really cool. But considering that's now gone, you all have both of us this small mini map. But that doesn't fix most of the issues. And I think it would be better if you both had a separate screen. You can't even do that. Like, you can't even do that locally. Um, you can only do it on one Switch and one Switch alone. Mm. Oh, that really sucks. That's, um, that, that seems like a really big oversight, <laughs> if anything. Because even just the ability to have your own individual Switches to play it with seems like an, an obvious feature for uh, a multiplayer of any sort of game to have. So yeah, it's a shame I, that at it's least, missing. In my opinion, at least they should have done that. Mm -hmm. But the fact it doesn't have that or online, I don't know. I think that's a little odd. Yeah, I think. Yeah. How how is Pikmin three without having the screen during the day to day stuff? Because I think one of the things I really liked about Pikmin three was how you could use the Wii U gamepad to sort of dictate where where the other captains go. It made it like a bit more like a traditional RTS. You could tell Brittany to go here, Charlie to go here. You take Alf and then hot swap between them when they're getting yeah. to your locations. And obviously this doesn't have the gamepad anymore, so you can't just instantly mm. do it on the fly. Yeah. So um, there are two halves to this. Obviously, it's quicker to touch the gamepad and do that stuff. I, I agree with mm -hmm. that. The other hand is that if you would mispress it, it would somehow switch your control scheme over to the gamepad for no mm. apparent reason whatsoever on Wii U. Um, so now if you press uh, minus and you go into the menu, you don't have that separation anymore. You just uh, drag your cursor to a certain point to if one of the characters you are, are currently using is active, put them to that spot and you're good to go. And honestly, in the end, it's a much better system. Um, it's not as direct as the gamepad, but it it's, um, causes m less misclicks than on Wii U. Okay, I suppose that's a, I suppose that's only an issue if you're actually using the Wii remote and the gamepad, because I don't think yeah. I actually ever used the Wii remote for Pikmin Three. Although I did like it for Pikmin One and Two, 
I just think because the gamepad was such the new thing at the time, I wanted to just use it exclusively. <laughs> yeah, I mean that or the pro controller obviously mm-hmm. are are more fun ways to play because you have less real estate in your hands. But obviously, if you use the gamepad, that's less of an issue. But I think for everybody else, I think it will feel in the end much better. Okay, well, that's good then, at least. That's that's a plus because you want to see you want these to come with benefits rather than negatives. Like so far, the Switch most of the Switch ports have been pretty decent. I feel like the only one that's suddenly lacking content is Captain Toad, which just seems I, to have content I, I taken still from feel it. Like, I, I still feel like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is absolutely inferior to the original version. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. I haven't actually. I actually don't know much about it because I did not care at all. It, <laughs> I, I, they it, added it, Peachette, and that's about all I know. <laughs> it, it's basically they've removed one of the toads to combine them into one character, and now if you play the game the way it's heavily marketed and advertised to be, which is for a player, someone is locked into an easy mode character. Oh, right. Yeah, that is a bit of a pain. I can see. I can see why that's an issue. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a shame. I mean, in the end, I will say this for it, though. It's more meant for a casual public. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. I, I think giving somebody an easier way to play the game may help them to put them in the same playing field as everybody else. Yeah, I, I don't think it's wrong to have easy mode characters. I think it's just... it's it's. I don't think it's right to automatically lock one of the four players to have to use an easy mode character. I I mean, completely justified. Um, mm-hmm. I just think that the majority of people playing this game are not people like us. Yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> That's the other thing. That is very true. It, 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 it sold more than Mario Maker 2 for a goddamn reason. That's true. <laughs> Someone in chat, the B2B uh, Mario Russia Maker says, too. at least Captain Toad got the DLC. I mean, Captain that's Toad's sure like, it did, didn't it? <laughs> can you say what the other difficulty change in uh, Pikmin Freeze is on my chat? I can. So, um, if you go too hard, um, all the assist mode features have been sort of rectified. There are also less items, because on regular normal now, they have included more items than on Wii U. So you have more nectar eggs, for example, that can uh, give your Pikmin flowered. Okay. Um, but they were all removed that again in hard. So hard is basically what normal was in Pikmin Free. Um, oh, okay. If you go to ultra spicy, it locks you to only having sixty Pikmin on a field. Oof, that's <laughs> limiting. But I, I like I like the I like the name ultra spicy, though for the hardest difficulty. <laughs> also, uh, I only played it with, with the. Of the first two bosses, but the amount of health that those bosses have has also significantly increased. Hmm. Oh, so they, they just buffed the enemies and nerfed your how much stuff you can have, basically. <laughs> just, yeah, basically. I have to see how that long, because usually difficulty like that, all that does is increase the amount of time it takes to do stuff, as opposed to actually make things I, I harder. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that... Um... Well, Pikmin 3 was never too difficult. I would say that the original is obviously more difficult now with yes. the change they made to Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Um, but um, Ultra Spicy really touches your food reserves in a way I've not seen before in a Pikmin game. and It really forces you to think about every decision that you make. It's super ultra micromanaging. Um, and not everybody will enjoy that, but mm-hmm. some people who are already really into Pikmin will really get a kick out of it, I think. Yeah, that might actually That's be good. an interesting way to play. I think if I do get Pikmin three, I don't have any plans to because I already had it on the Wii U. Um, I I probably play it through that mode because I remember one of my issues on the Wii U version being that as soon as you, it, it, you you're encouraged to get fruit to stay alive, but you're very rarely lacking in juice. Yeah, I think that's the main thing in Pikmin 3. Like, you never really run out of juice. You're just facing difficulties with managing your Pikmin. Yeah. So having one where you really have to start thinking about this because you have less Pikmin and stuff and less resources is probably going to create a much more stressful, potentially, but interesting uh, style for at least for Pikmin veterans. Newcomers probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> Newcomers absolutely shouldn't do that. No, it's, it's, that's a, that sounds like a bad idea. And it's okay, a bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> But yeah, that's Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Um, I know we're going to talk about a different game together with Nintendo X, so I'm just yes. going to go over for now. Um, mm-hmm. 
the the only other game that I might want to talk about now is I I played through a year on I played through Tetris Effect again on PlayStation Four. Um, nice. Oh, nice. And yeah, that's still still game still freaking good. I cannot <laughs> wait for the so so because I'm getting an an Xbox Series X um mm-hmm. come November tenth. Okay. Uh, they they have a time the time to exclusive multiplayer mode, so I cannot mm-hmm. wait for that because it's part of Game Pass. I already can download it, so why the heck mm-hmm. not? Um, but yeah, I uh, I played Xbox through advantage. Journey again just because I want to get a feel for it again because obviously through Tetris ninety nine it's a f- different completely different feeling of a game. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, because um the way that the buttons are laid out and the way you control the game, it, it, it's slightly more different and it's more flexible into pros especially with the with the mode where you lock everything in place and try to make as many lines as possible um yeah the 16 that, level that game, tetris that game is cool. still a trip though like the the soundtrack <laughs> and how everything is laid out and the various backgrounds and that game is insanely trippy but i i love that game to death similar to how i like also uh the other games that that studio makes like luminous it feels mm-hmm. very similar to that but in that um Tetris setting, and mm. it, it, it's such a it's such a fun game. I have such a fun time playing through it, <laughs> and I'm kind of want to go back to it now even more, and maybe go through some of the additional modes again and see if I can get a high score. But I also kind of want to wait until like next month. But um, we'll see if I can grip myself away from it. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it's going to happen, and I'm just going to play it again. And I get it on Xbox, but uh, we'll see. Uh, at least Tetris is one of them games you can feasibly replay because it'll never be the exact same pattern falling down every time, even if it's all the same visuals and music. But that's fine because <laughs> that, those are ex- things you experience multiple times. Sure, I mean, sure, sure. I mean, I mean, Tetris Effect as a whole is an experience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that. That's totally how that game is, and I've seen so much of that because uh my fiance on a daily basis he'll basically swap from tetris 99 to tetris effect and back and forth (laughs) 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 he he, he plays so much tetris (laughs) see i I like tetris i played it at egx and my friend has it so i played it around his and uh, i've enjoyed it every single time the only reason i don't have it is because i already have about 50 million versions of tetris and i'm not (laughs) sure i can necessarily justify buying another even if it's better than a lot of the versions of tetris i have to be fair I need it to be the right sort of price point for me to actually decide I want to pick it up, which is probably somewhere between ten and fifteen pounds. It was nearly there from what I from I mean it has been checked. on sale multiple times, so where were you where were you at when it was on sale? <laughs> apparently not not on the PlayStation store, apparently. <laughs> Every time I, mean I look cha- it's always seven. I mean they're changing 20. up the PlayStation store and PlayStation 4, so who knows? Yeah, who knows? Maybe oh, they'll uh, maybe maybe it will drop to the reasonable price. I do this a lot with games. I did this with Rayman Legends and I still haven't played it. I just didn't want to buy it until it was like a tenner for some reason. And then I bought it when it was a tenner eight years after it came out. <laughs> well, wait, no. That was, I mean, it's a perfect this year, time so to play Ubisoft games years. right now. Is it? <laughs> oh, <'cause... laughs> Be- because circumstances. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've got to enjoy Rayman Legends because who knows? It might be the last Rayman game <laughs> we get. <laughs> it. it, it, it does seem like it's the last Rayman game. <laughs> yeah, so I might have to enjoy that uh, to the fullest, because I hear nothing but good things about it, and I did enjoy Origins, but it just sits there, my the Wii U version, in, yeah. in my chest of drawers, untouched, because it's the Wii U, it's on the Wii U, and I need to set that up. Uh, no, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Yeah. So, yeah, alright, well, um, we'll move over to the games I've been playing, because uh, Dan mentioned that we want, uh, we, we've been, actually been playing a similar game, and that's Crash Bandicoot 4. Yes. So that came out ah, yeah. a few weeks ago. So I live with someone who's a big Crash fan, has done quite a few Let's Plays of it. He's beaten the game already, and he's now going through <laughs> going sorry. for that 100%. Um, and he's absolutely insane for doing that, uh, because <laughs> I, 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 I like, I, I'm enjoying Crash 4. Um, I grew up playing the first three Crash games. I played right. the Insane Trilogy. I actually don't think I enjoyed the Insane Trilogy as much as I remembered enjoying the originals, but I am getting a bigger kick out of Crash 4. I don't think it's like this outstanding, amazing, like better than any of the other Crash games sort of thing. Uh, but it I, is I a do decent. Think I do Crash think that's game. the case. You think it is? <laughs> yeah. I, I, there's something about it where I still feel like I think I prefer Crash 2 slightly to it. I de- it's definitely better than the original by far, and I think it's better than 3. 
uh but i, I don't know my, my, it could be nostalgia goggles on me for crash 2 to be fair and i haven't I, finished I, I, crash I, I didn't play yet, those games so. i have zero nostalgia for them i still think um that i prefer crash 4 by a lot okay fair i maybe I've maybe been, my I've opinion will change. a lot actually from a lot of people including <laughs> the uh the the fairly um small but really really uh really <laughs> just just like hyper fixated cr like crash crowd that we have in our discord they, they <laughs> yeah they seem to agree that four uh might actually be the best one yeah I, what, what i what i like about crash four it's 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 multifold for me it's like the controls are super easy to get into uh, I think the level design is far more focused than other Crash games. And I think there's more curve to its difficulty, which in some Crash games, I don't just don't think it's there. Um, they play a lot of, with dynamic uh, camera standpoints. Um, there is so much to like about how they laid out this game. Um, in addition, I think the mask play um, that they introduced, the mask power-ups that you can find in the levels... Um, are so immediate because sometimes you just have to switch on the mask on the fly and immediately do different actions like moving up the the gravity or ensuring that some platforms appear and it, it's so active i i really like how this platforming game feels and how active it feels and there's no really dead air and i sometimes feel like in recent platforms there is some dead air to give the, the player some le legency just do that at the end. Let just let me go and have a good time. And I think that's what Crash Four really brings home for me. Yeah, I think I agree on some of those points. The mask system is very good in Crash Four. I th I think that's much better than in Crash's previous power up systems that he's had in Crash Three and Crash Two because it adds a lot to the platforming. It's pretty much instantaneous, and when they're used in conjunction with one another, it works really really well. And I think the level design is pretty much great for the most part. I really like the dinosaur level. Uh, wasn't mm -hmm. a big fan of the snow level, um, the snow world. But I, the parade one, the sort of... Um, I don't know if it's meant to be Day of the Dead or Mardi Gras or whatever, <laughs> but that city yeah. skate one is really cool as well. Um, mm. I think my problem, and this, this is definitely sort of more of a me thing, is I'm very much on the I want to try and get everything while playing through the game. And in the previous Crash games, I've gotten all the crates and stuff. I don't tend to go for the time trial gems or anything like that. But this game, I feel like Toys for Bob went absolutely ham with the amount of collectibles and their positions and locations and stuff to the point where I feel like it's not as bad as Yoshi's Crafted World, which was absolutely <laughs> awful for that. But it's like worse than Donkey Kong 64 in terms of collectibles. There are some levels where just there, there are just things that don't like where trying to get all of the boxes or the hidden gem or stuff absolutely goes against how you want to be playing these levels where mm. it making is making you stop making you run back there's one i just saw on twitter which i hadn't even realized there's a hidden switch behind one random barrel that then you have to run back through the level a tiny bit move the camera as far to the right as possible and you'll see it like a tiny corner right that you can now jump to and i don't know how I don't know how that person figured it out, <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't have figured it out if I hadn't seen that thing. And there's just elements like that where it really bogs I mean, down the experience. Here's my argument for it, right? You don't necessarily have to go for all the boxes. Oh, I mean, course. you can do it for it later if you want to do one hundred percent. But for me, uh, it, it's something I likely do later down the line. For me, it's just enjoying what the game is for the moment. Of um, course, I, I definitely think it's yeah. definitely a me thing. Um, just yeah. how I like playing games. I don't necessarily want to go for one hundred percent, but if I can get all the boxes in one round, yeah, I will no, go for it. Like, and I, I, I'll keep I'll keep killing myself <laughs> to restart a checkpoint just to make <laughs> to get that next grind one because it's just come round the corner too fast for me to react to it. Right, and I think that's also a positive thing. There are infinitive lives here, which um, yes, that is good. It which they should have changed a long time ago, but I'm glad they did. Um. But also, there are like multiple different characters next to Crash and Coco, mm. which also have their separate levels, and you can go back then to early adventures and see how they change up the the gameplay. Uh, and then also, if you finish levels, there are like these weird graphical styles that they add to the existing levels and mirror them. So there's so much content there, and I think that's to 
so, there's so much to do in Crash 4, and I think that's the beauty of it. I think the only thing that really annoys me personally is I don't think that the that the bosses are necessarily great. They feel too difficult. You think? See, I actually I actually don't, haven't minded the bosses in this. Um, I've actually found them to be pretty easy, to be honest. <laughs> I've only done yeah. three. I haven't reached um entropy yet i've only done cortex i i, I uh, don't oxide hate them. And, I, I, where I, where uh, i'm annoyed by them is that they feel less original in some ways they where the level design really shines all the way through i think sometimes the the boss design leaves somewhat to be desired uh, yeah I, I i could see that because cortex and engine are basically the same thing dodge the projectiles they throw at you by either sliding under them or jumping over them and hit the one enemy they throw at them to disrupt it. And then you can use the mask. A Cortex in particular, because you get the time-stopping mask, becomes an absolute joke <laughs> to to get around yeah. things, I, I find. And that does bring it down the boss fight somewhat. But I, I have actually not minded the bosses in this one. Uh, they're not That's as fair. varied as the original. But at the same time, the original could be have some really frustrating boss fights in it. So it's sort of a pay of balance, I think. I feel. <laughs> but for the rest, yeah, I, I, I love this game. It, it's, uh, it's <laughs> very enjoyable to me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this, and I think if I did run through all the levels just and ignored everything, I'd probably be enjoying it a lot more. But it's just there's like little things, like the hitbox on the polar bears seems smaller than it actually should be. So right. you miss boxes. The fact that at some point they decide instead of just needing six gems to get costumes you now have to get seven gems meaning That's it's fair. actually impossible to get the costume on your first run through a level it's like think little things like the, the fact that the alternative routes for some levels you do half of the level completely new with a new character and then it just makes you do the other half of the level exactly the same as it was before just with different crate placements and it just feels a bit like if, i think if you pace it and you go back and do all the alternative levels after you've beaten the game it's not too bad but if you were to do mm. them one after another, it feels a bit like padding to me. I think it's it's little things like that that I think prevent it from being absolutely the top crash game, in my opinion. But I'm still having a really good time with it. It's still a very good game. It's much better than the last two decades of Crash Bandicoot games, that's for sure. I still I still think this is my favorite Crash game, but that's just personal. Yeah, I've, Tris, Colin, and I guess you two haven't played Crash. Uh, yeah, I, I have <laughs> not. No, I, <laughs> what, what's I'm a not... crash? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was... not, I'm not familiar with the crash series myself. I know, I know a bunch of friends that have played it, but I myself have never had a chance to get into it. I, th I think for a somebody who's a platformer junkie but hasn't played Crash, I think Crash Four is also a great way to get into it. Yeah, because it's a good interest. They, they made fair. they made strides to make it more approachable for newcomers, especially with the infinite lives thing. It, it feels more approachable now than it has been before. Mm. And there's a lot of cool references for existing Crash fans. Characters from the racing game showing up. The pr pr the parade has Spyro appears multiple sure. times. The secret but fake also, Crash uh, also for people who are not really into that and just want to have a good time. That's also just there. Yeah. No, I agree. Oh, you I'm, mentioned I'm kind Spyro. Of... Spyro is one I know. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm, I'm kind yeah, of hoping I was, I was, that... I know this Spyro guy. <laughs> I was a Spyro kid. See, I'm Spyro kind of yeah. hoping that they do a, a new Spyro next, because that was also... The Spyro remake was done by Toys for Bob, and they've always been in Skylanders. Just because when I played the remakes of Spyro and Crash, I grew What's up as a Skylanders? Crash kid. <laughs> I grew up as a Crash <laughs> kid, but I preferred the Spyro trilogy when I played the remakes. So I'm kind of interested in them doing a new Spyro game. I mean, I mean, I joke. I did enjoy Skylanders, but that that series has has died a horrible, horrible death. It has very much so. That's why they should take the Crash Skylander stuff and uh, put them in Smash and let them use, but it, use it there as an amiibo. But here's the thing: like the Skylanders games already showed how good Toys of Bob is with making platforming levels. Mm -hmm. This is just their next evolution of actually putting that effort into a more focused video game. Yeah. I agree. They, yeah. they, they've got plenty of experiences, and they've got a specific design about them that I think is quite nice. Like I think the enemy designs in Crash Four are they fit the style, but are also different and varied enough from what previous Crash games had that it kind of gives it. They've really expanded out the Crash lore. It's like the Mario Odyssey of the Crash games. <laughs> sure. 
Uh, but that's the main one. That's the main game I've been playing. I obviously restarted playing Pokemon Sword and Shield the other day to get through Isle of Armor before Crown Tundra, and that's going well. Oh, wait, I didn't realize how wait, short Isle of Armor was. When you said restarted, was. I was like, "Wait, you like you completely restarted the <laughs> no. game, or you, you just jumped back into it?" No, I jumped back into it after six okay. months. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that, I didn't realize how short Isle of Armor was. I'm already halfway through it after one session of streaming. That's only because I spent. A good hour hunting down branches so I could get a slow bro. So <laughs> there's, it, it could have probably sped through the whole thing potentially in one sitting. <laughs> but pacing it because I, if I finish it next week, then I'm just in time for Crown Tundra to launch at the end of the month. That's true. And I can go straight into that. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I've been playing that, and I've also I also finally got around to playing um, Octo Expansion in Splatoon Two. <laughs> After however many Sorry. years it's been, <laughs> nice, nice. that and that is good. That is probably hands down the best single player content in Splatoon. The yeah. last uh, marathon sort of gauntlet of challenges were where you oh, start man, sneaking yeah. through the base and then you got to go find weapons and all that. That is all fantastic, and the music they use there is really good. And the remix of the Splatoon one song during the Agent it's Three really segment funny, is really funny because I have great. like. 7,000 hours in Splatoon 1 and 2, but I've never played the single player content for Splatoon 1 and 2. See, this is Splatoon I, I mean, here's, 1 here's is my, really here's my Here's my uh, stance on it, because also a big Splatoon guy. I think the single player in 1 and 2, like the main the main one, was mostly in, there to introduce players to how, the entire concept of how to play the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think with um, Octo Expansion, they already assume that you know how to play the game and kind of misguides you in that specific way because there are miss missions there that will really test your skill in some ways like the main campaigns have never done before. Um, and especially the last gauntlet, especially that last hurdle in the game, is something really meant as a love letter to existing players of Splatoon. Yeah, I, I, they yeah. think they put it off really, really well. For the record, I actually mm. think the Splatoon 1 story mode is really good, but the Splatoon 2 one is very basic. Like, it's it's almost like a rehash I mean, of the first one. One. One, is, one is... I think 1 and 2 are actually very similar. Um, the only reason that I think 1 is better is because it was the first time. That's all, that's probably true. Because, yeah, I, th I think a big problem with my 1 in Splatoon 2 is there wasn't anything that felt new about it in comparison yeah, to the maybe. first one. Maybe that's why I didn't mind two so much because I didn't play one. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, might that's be why. Yeah. No, that's exactly the reason. That's exactly yeah. the reason. There is no other um, explanation there, to be honest, and it doesn't need to be. But I think with Octo Expansion, it felt so new and fresh in the way they set that entire campaign up is so entirely different from anything removed from Splatoon Two or One in general that I think Octo Expansion is like the best DLC content that money can buy. Mm hmm. It, it is incredibly solid. Yeah, it is great. But that, that's those are the games I've been playing recently. What about you, Colin? You can go up next. Uh, I've been mostly playing a lot of Doom mods. Uh, <laughs> there's there's one in particular called Ashes Twenty Sixty Three, which is uh, it's it's far from complete, but it's really badass. It's like a uh, Mad Max like nineteen eighties apocalypse style thing, but it's in the Doom engine. Because the Doom engine is really versatile. That, like, I, I, the, the, the quality and the creativity of Doom mods in the last, like, half decade has, like, skyrocketed. And it's like, oh, it's, it's, you pay, you pay five bucks for Doom and, like, you, you just have, like, infinite video game. Is, is, it, is, is it the original Doom, right? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the original. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. it's, it's just so much longevity out of, out of, uh, some, nice. Some some nice. twenty six year old games now. Mm. Um, played a little bit of Clone Hero because I got a new Guitar Hero guitar. In Hell the yeah, Clone Hero. Play. Hell yeah. Um, I really, oh man, I, I I've also been playing, replaying a little bit of Beatles Rock Band because like it's not, oh. it's, not it's not the same. Um, and also some Mad Lads. I I need to figure out how to actually set this up. Mm -hmm. But some mad lads have been completing Beatles Rock Band. Like, wow. they're out to include the entire discography of the band in Beatles Jesus. Rock Band. 
complete with new dreamscapes and animations and everything. So it's like, wow. it's like, it's like fully rounded out. Uh, in fact, they just released like a John Lennon pack because it was John Lennon's birthday uh, two days ago. Mm-hmm. And so That's they, they added, sanity. They added like Julia from the white album. They added across the universe from let it be. And then they added working class hero from this solo stuff. And it's it's so cool. <laughs> like it's it's really <laughs> neat because I think um I, I think even if you are not a fan of the Beatles, I think it's really hard to disagree that Beatles rock band like like it, it is the best one. It is the best rock band guitar hero game. I can um, understand that. Because it's just it's just so refined. It's just right. so like they got every single thing right the charting is perfect the mm. the presentation is fantastic um it's it's pretty much everything you'd want out of a game like that the only real issue is it, it has to cater to a specific niche of people who like boomer rock um <laughs> but I, I i dig the hell out of it and the, the only issue is you have to have a modded ps3 or 360 to play it so i gotta figure I think you can also, if you if you want to jump into PS3 360 emulation, you, you can do that too. But like all that stuff is very early on, so it's it's all very finicky. Um, so the closest I can get to that for now is just like custom charts and Clone Hero. That's Colin, fair. I'll let you, I'll let you answer this question from chat from the BWS. Yeah, I, I saw <laughs> Beach Boys rock band. There is. There is one Beach Boy song across all of the rock band and guitar hero games. Just one. Just one. Wow. And it's and it's and it's a live version of Good Vibrations and it's in Rock Band 3 and that's it. It's the only song they ever I don't know why. Absolute it's, a, it's a it's a fairly large <laughs> discography but they've only did one song. <laughs> I guess it's kind of like Pink Floyd, where there's just there's no Pink Floyd songs, even for like DLC. There's just like none. Mm. Oh Someone just has a bias, it's going for their own music taste. <laughs> of the creators. No, no one wants to play ten minutes of of this shine on you crazy <laughs> diamond on rock band. No, that's it's bullshit. Not, I mean, they put twenty one twelve Guitar Hero six. That's <laughs> like what? Is, what's the issue? Colin, what Clone Hero is for? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is what Clone Hero is for. <laughs> you can play Kokomo me, me, in Clone Hero. Me, me thinking about Guitar Hero and Rock Band makes me realize how bad they screwed up Guitar Hero life. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. okay. I think I think Guitar I Hero Live has a really good controller. Yeah, I, I have it here. It's it's real good, but the I problem is... love the controller. The yeah. game sucks. Yeah. What they should have done. You don't want to play Taylor Swift songs and Guitar Hero, Colin? <laughs> no, it's, it's... <laughs> you know what it is. What they should have done for Guitar Hero Live, because I think I think Guitar Hero Live is better than Rock Band Four by a mile. Interesting. Uh, and the reason the reason being is because Rock Band Four is like the most flaccid video game ever made. It's like mm. it's the it's like hey, remember Rock Band Two and Three? It's that again. But like you have to buy everything again. Sure. Uh, which, by the way, the <laughs> the the adapter, so I could use my 360 instruments on my Xbox One, fucking broke. So I oh. can't even I can't even oh, play man. Rock Band Four anymore. And they oh. don't sell they don't sell that, that adapter sucks. anymore because they made Mad Cats go out of business. Oh, so, that's, that sucks. So I, I <laughs> can't play slow. Rock Band Four. Um. And it doesn't matter because you just just play Rock Band Three. It has all the DLC anyway. Like there's there's no reason not to play Rock Band Three, um, but also Clone Hero. But like at least Guitar Hero Live came from the uh, the angle of like, well, let's if we have to produce all this shit again, like let's let's kind of like go in a different angle. Yeah, which I which I think is like the the best way to do it. I think what they should have done was make. Good Guitar Hero Live with the Guitar Hero Live controller, but they should have had, um, they should have had like a greatest hits of Guitar Hero One, Two, and Three, and then maybe you put in like Bangarang by Skrillex. I, I'm not, I'm not against like putting in like newer pop and rock songs because they were already doing that shit with like yeah, Guitar absolutely. Hero World War onward, but like mm-hmm. they need to because like Guitar Hero Live has Paint It Black. 
that's fine. Yeah. It's got a couple ZZ Top songs in the Guitar Hero TV section. That's fine. <laughs> like, that's just, you do that, and then you then you put in, like, a, you know, Katy Perry's Tiger. <laughs> like, you, you just, you know, you, you mix it up. Um, <laughs> though I do like, I do like how Clone Hero has completely eradicated the need for both of those games. Pro Tom's just Guitar Hero Top 100. Okay, guys. <laughs> that's, that's fine. I, li- okay, so uh, what I really like about Clone Hero is that some mad lads have like... Uh, if you don't know what Clone Hero is, it's basically, I want to say... What is it? It's like the Guitar Hero 5 engine, but replicated in Unity as yes. a free download. And then... Uh, if you know where to look, you can just download the entire, like, just set list of every single hero game. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's just, cl- like, all the guitar heroes, band hero, uh, all the rock bands, even, like, DJ hero stuff, and then, like, millions of customs. Like, just just a ton of customs. And yeah, pretty accurate when you say millions of customs. There's so many. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and even... There, there, are, there are dedicated streamers and YouTubers who do really well with that stuff. Yep. Yeah. I know shout- Akai and I know Jason yeah. Paradise. Th- those two say, are my favorites. I'm going to say shout out to Brown Man. But uh, it's, uh, what was I going to say? But like, it, it's it's great because it's something the Guitar Hero and Rock Band devs couldn't figure out how to do. Because <laughs> my favorite, my favorite, uh, my favorite story about the Rock Band franchise is like when they tried to bring Rock Band 4 to PC. And they were like, yeah, we need, like, they, they did a fig campaign. And they're like, yeah, we need $2 million to bring Rock Band 4 to PC. And they were like, oh, and if we make more, we'll include, like, the, the SDK so you guys can make custom songs. And it made, I don't know, I think it made, like, $1.2 million. It made well over half of what they were asking. But it was not enough. And they were basically like, well, I guess... I guess you fucking guys just don't want Rock Band on PC. And it was like, no, no, no. No one wants Rock Band 4 on PC. <laughs> <laughs> like, people just want the engine and, like, the ability to use their instruments. Like, no, like, because no one cares about playing Bruno Mars. Like, because that's that's ultimately what you do when you pay for, like, a full Rock Band game is you're paying for the licenses. If you don't care about the licenses, then, like, uh-oh. <laughs> um, that's why those games have no inherent value. Like, uh, I bought a Wii guitar from, like, a local game shop, and the dude included, like, five Guitar Hero games for free, because he just, like, they're, like, they don't sell. No one wants them, because <laughs> everyone already has them. Yeah. So, so Clone Hero fills in the gap. What's even great about uh, Clone Hero, uh, with with stuff in regards to, like, Guitar Hero Live, is, like, the Guitar Hero TV functionality is shut down. Yeah. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. You can't play that on the real game. However, mm-hmm. someone, or at least a group of people, actually went in and they downloaded um, all the, the music videos that were on Guitar Hero TV. And they either managed to to recreate the charts, or they were just able to rip the charts out of the game. And now you can play the entirety of Guitar Hero TV's content in Clone Hero, and even the devs of Guitar Hero TV say, yeah, just play Clone Hero. Don't actually play Guitar Hero Live. <laughs> well, the, the, the devs went out of business, right? Uh, I don't know if they're out of business. It's just that the servers are shut down, so there's no way to play because it. So you might as well play it in like the free Unity thing. Yeah. Let me let me quickly check, because I, 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 I remember who the developers are. I cannot recall their names. One second. Freestyle Games. Freestyle Games. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, they, um... Also, thank you, Ryo. I'm just really, I'm just, I'm, I'm in the Guitar Hero zone right now. So, <laughs> Freest- Freestyle, um, actually went out of business. The, so, the, the, all the people that were at Freestyle were actually acquired by Ubisoft. Ah. Uh, um, and they okay. changed the name now to Ubisoft Lemington. Uh, but all the all the parts all the parts that were like basically them that they made because freestyle was also responsible for GJ Hero and for uh, Sync Party on Wii U and for Guitar Hero Life. All of those assets went back to Activision. Yeah, I I just think like I mean 
Activision fucking up Guitar Hero, that's one thing. Like, Guitar Hero Live is, like, an isolated incident. I don't know... I don't know what Harmonix is doing. Because, like, Harmonix is like a chicken without their head. Because they have Rock Band 4, which you, like... Working on the uh, uh, pretty much like the, the DJ game lately. I, I forget. Yeah, what they're, they're they're making that Fuser game, which, yeah. which yeah. looks cute, but it doesn't look interesting, especially not for I, sixty fucking dollars. I am, I, I, I am personally very interested in what, how Fuser play, Fuser plays. I I will <laughs> rent it, but like there is no yeah. way I am paying anywhere close full price for that game. Bro, or even I more rentals are illegal here, so I'll have to buy. It, so. <laughs> Ba- back what? at uh, PAX East, they had like a huge like setup for that, where it had yeah. like a light show and like it had like like the smoke machine, where it has like all like the the colored scene coming out. But like, yeah. they, they went crazy with that, so they're really marketing that game. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the that seems to be Harmonix's thing. They go way in with the marketing, but like the actual final product, at least nowadays, is like what what is this? Like this is just like. I, I am, once again, I'm super interested in Fuser because it's like basically like a music festival where you can play up to 12 people and combine like elements of different songs. And it, that sounds like really cool to me. It I looks, like that aspect looks, of it. It looks fine. I feel like it's 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 made de- like deliberately for people who love like SoundClown shit posting, <laughs> like Sipa Gunner kind of stuff. No, because no. it's <laughs> because it's because it's like. I, I I literally joked to my friend. I'm like, oh cool, they're gonna make a game where I can mix like uh party rockers by LMFAO and bad guy. And then they literally put that in the trailer. Like that's in the trailer of the game. I didn't have to see it. I just knew that's what it was gonna be. Yeah, but, they they include yeah, like I, in, in the main in the base game, I believe they are including about one hundred songs. Yeah. But yeah, yeah like, that's, like, that's what it says. I'm just looking at the at it now. Um, yeah, and, and the, the list is kind of varied. That's what that's why I'm kind of down because I'm kind of down with the same rhythm of like rock and everything. And DJ Hero tried to live at that because, but the remixes were also kind of off sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm kind of down to try this and see how it lets up. Maybe it will be bad. I don't know. But I'm not, I just I'm not but, saying but, bad. But, 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 but I don't think. It's, but I don't I, think it's. Dollars, <laughs> but, I, but, but, but I want to. Well, I definitely want to see how this plays out, though. So I'm definitely okay. down to uh, to check all of it. Also, thank you, Huff, for the six dollars. Also, thank you, Ryo, for the ten dollars. For, for yes. at the same time, they did include, and I'm not joking, they did include Rick Astley. Never gonna give you up. Yes, they did. Yeah. So you can now fuse that with <laughs> any of these songs. And <laughs> they knew what they were doing with that one. And if they... I can mix that with "Can't Stop the Feeling" from Justin Timberlake, I am down, my guy. <laughs> I mean, they really just need to get on it by including All Star by Smash Mouth and then somehow getting the Space Jam theme in there. And then, oh no, in fact, no, I'm sorry. Smash Mouth All Star is in the game. So all they need is Space Jam and then they're set. They, they've, they've they will never get Space everything. Jam. <laughs> but Space Jam 2 is coming out, you know, maybe get a yeah. collaboration tie in. <laughs> uh, Special DLC. I'm just going to mix Take On Me. With Billy Eilish's mm-hmm. bad guy and have a good time. Thank you very much for my death talk. <laughs> yeah, they, have, they have that. They have um. They have that. They have Rock Band Four, which is like they're still updating it, though I don't know who the fuck is playing it. And they have Autica, which is like their Beat Saber knockoff, except there's like no customs allowed, even on PC. Hmm. I don't Oof. like what, what I. I don't get it. They also have like an Oculus based. A rock band game that I I don't know who owns it because it's just it, it's such a weird concept because you have to like affix a uh, an Oculus controller to a Guitar Hero guitar and then just like connect that to your PC somehow that yeah. definitely sounds like a lot <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah not I don't <laughs> I, I don't I really don't understand their business model like I really want to see Harmonix do well it's just that the stuff they're producing right now just seems so uh, overinflated and yet like com- like severely just underwhelming. But, yeah, I, I, uh, I definitely understand that. For me, for me, it's I'm, I I just want this to be like the weird thing that I play on the weekends. Fusion looks so incredibly dumb, and I I think I will love it if it turns out the way that I hope it is. As I said, I'll probably just rent it, but like I don't, I just don't see myself paying full price for it, like at any time. <laughs> Once again, I don't really have that option, so 
sad day. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, my pre-order will come with three additional songs. So hey, there's that. <laughs> Epic. Oh my nice. god, Fuser isn't even on Gamefly yet. <laughs> it will come with, with a DJ Khaled song, it comes with a Dua Lipa song and a Killer song, so hey, there's that. Oh my god. Let's get Mr. DJ Khaled! Party rockers! <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's also, by the way, a VIP edition. If you do buy that, you get additional 25 songs. Oh, oh okay. Nice. nice. Man, I... The thing I miss about being able to go outside um is <laughs> in <laughs> at magfest they used to have like they always had a rock band set up sure and it was really cool because the way it worked was that anyone could play any instrument like that they, they were just constantly on swap but the songs chosen to be played had to be played like the they had to be ch- uh, chosen by the people who were going to sing them mm. so i i couldn't just be like hey play psycho killer like i would have to sing psycho killer <laughs> to play psycho killer <laughs> don't laugh talking heads is a banger and um and and <laughs> but so so one guy chose party rock <laughs> by lmfao <laughs> and I just like I was like I gotta play Pink Rock, <laughs> and it's literally just one note. <laughs> it's just one, even on expert, it's one note. It's just like <laughs> do 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 do. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I miss that. I miss that so much. Mm, I, yeah, um, I, I feel that. Yeah, yeah same. Well, Triss, <laughs> what <laughs> games have you been playing? We're about to um, so an hour in now. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been jumping between uh, a few things lately. Um, the biggest thing I've been playing lately is probably Fall Guys, because Season 2 just came out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, a, a bunch of my friends have gotten back into the game since season two, so I'm actually getting to play with people again instead of just a bunch of random people online. Um, it's it's definitely still fun, and it's kind of interesting how I feel like almost every day for the last week I've had conversations about the game, and someone's like, "Wait, isn't that game dead?" And it's like, <laughs> I, I I don't think Fall Guys has dipped in popularity at. All no, it is, I, I, it I is will, still I'll, top three most viewed on Twitch. Um, I think I do think I do think it's dropped. Them. That's about it. Yeah, I think do think it dropped um, in popularity because of the the grasp of Among Us. Yeah, yeah. Among Us. So I, I now Among Us is dropping uh, with whatever is I the think new it's just one. Just in a weird Genshin space Impact. where there's there's two flavor of the month games instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, not to put anything against Fall Guys. It's just like, that's just the situation. It's a flavor of the month game and there's two of them right now. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it does help to get season two. So I played Fall Guys season two as well when they brought up, but it's the mm-hmm. first time I played Fall Guys in a good month. And a big reason for that is once I played, even with friends, once we'd played a few matches of it, we kind of had seen everything that we felt we could get from the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it needed it needed a few more games. We were just getting the same bunch over and over again, and there are some not very fun games in the first season. Like I'm not a big fan of the matching one uh, because no one ever loses oh, that unless yeah, they're being really fair. dumb about it. And some of, some of the team games are fine. Um, I, I know some people who really hate the tails, the grabbing the tails one, but I don't <laughs> mind that so much. <laughs> Tail tag mm. is frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> but um, there are there are some very average ones but i have like some of the updates they've added i like that they've added a specific gauntlet mode where it's nothing but yeah. the gauntlet challenges because i think those are the best ones they're the most ninja warrior-esque takeshi's challenge-esque <laughs> ones so I, i'm enjoying I that seeing, yeah i definitely look forward to seeing like how they evolve the game and continuously make it better with each season and even just each update in general um because I, I i've i've been playing the game like every week but mm-hmm. I, I've jumped back into kind of playing it daily since the new season came out. And I, I've been really enjoying my time with it. And I think they made a lot of good quality of life updates, especially since a bunch of people originally dropped off, like coming back to it now for a lot of them. There's a lot that changed. Honestly, the problem with, with Fall Guys right now is that on one half, you have people who are really into Among Us right now. And they really are into Among Us. I played uh, people who stream. I played more with Among Us than ever before, like f- 40 hours now, it feels weird. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so I, um, I've played a lot another, of Among another, as well. And then in the middle point, you have people who are now going back into um, Rocket League because that went free to play a couple mm. weeks back. Right. Uh, yeah. And then at the right, you also have the new hotness, which is Genshin Impact. 
Yeah. Yeah, but I haven't tried that one yet. Uh, so that's why it's not really the top of conversation right now. I don't think it's completely dead or anything. I just don't right. think that when, just it, it, <laughs> when it comes to the corporate reel of game um, talks, I don't think it's at the top anymore. Yeah. No, yeah. I definitely understand that. Um, aside from Fall Guys, I mean, I do my Twitch streams with Mario Kart every weekend and a uh, bunch of weekdays. So I, I'm definitely still playing too much Mario Kart. As, as I tweeted last night, uh, I don't know why I'm like this, but I ended my two-hour stream of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and then just habit. I immediately booted up Mario Kart Tour. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately went from one to the other, and I just kind of looked up. I'm like, why, why, why am I like this? <laughs> and you proceeded um, to go to the pipe and pull for a golden dry burn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did actually try pulling for the golden shy guy because I had a bunch of Ruby saved up. I was like, you know what? Sure. And then I ended up getting doubles for three gold things that I already had. And so, you know what? Sure, their level goes up. Oh, well, I didn't get the Shy Guy, but that was more than I was expecting with See, my luck. I, I got the Golden Shy Guy. I wanted, I got, I wanted the oh, Golden nice. Dry Bones or Golden Cooper Free Running, and I got Golden Shy Guy and Golden Dry Bowser. <laughs> The, 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 I didn't the, Cooper want. Free Riding, the Cooper Free Running was one of the ones that I, I got another level in because of it. Um, so it's like, the game will forbid then... me from getting the coin block on any character. Like, it's still the only item I don't have. <laughs> I, I I don't have the uh the Giga Bomb. I never got King of Bomb, and I want a Gold Shy Guy for that reason. Um, outside of my apparent Mario Kart addiction, <laughs> um, I've been <laughs> watching a lot of a game recently that made me end up buying it yesterday. I just haven't had a chance to start it yet, and that's the the newly popular uh, Phasmophobia, the the multiplayer co op horror game oh, that's about okay. a ghost hunting. And that's also really popular on Twitch lately. A lot of people yeah, that's been that. growing in popularity over the last two weeks. Yeah, I think I think it went to early access around September twentieth, so it's only been out for a few weeks. But yeah, um, I wa I was watching a Vinny Vine Sauce stream it, and <laughs> it, it was absolutely hilarious. And I I always loved like the the ghost hunting shows and all that growing up. So uh, this is like right up my alley. So I got yeah. a bunch of friends interested in it as well. So. So uh, just... I downloaded that. I, I, I'm going to end up streaming that tonight, so that's going to be fun. But so, what is it? Just four <laughs> players try and catch ghosts in a haunted house. Like basically, it's it's it's, it's 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 four players. So you uh, you go into this house that ha supposedly has um, paranormal activity, and you go in and you have to use all this different equipment and uh, different methodologies to try to figure out if it's haunted and what kind of haunting it is. And if you stay too long or provoke things too much, you'll get killed. So <laughs> mm. <laughs> you kind of have to balance things out nicely. It's it, it, it's it's a social game still, but it, it's actually really neat. And I look forward to actually playing it with people because uh, everything I've seen of people playing it together, it just looks really fun. Mm. I don't have VR, and that seems to be the way a lot of people really enjoy it. It looks ridiculous in VR, but mm. um, it from what I hear, it's still good even without it. Okay, it might be one I uh, give a look. I've been playing a lot of online friends, uh, games of friends. But I've played apparently about seventeen hours of Among Us. Oh, wow. But I've played forty-six <laughs> hours of golf with your friends. So there's the real sleeper yeah. hit. <laughs> but yeah, but 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 yeah, I, I am always down now, especially now since I'm t sort of taking a break. I'm super down always to play Among Us for some reason. I think it's super fun. <laughs> I think it's just like a classic. Um, like but let classic me game let me side. say this to cl the close sort of section off, right? Mm -hmm. I think the the games that are now more viral hits for a while are better than they were years ago. Yes, yes, yes. I prefer I, this I, I think, strange to like. I, I think FNAF. games that come in the popular limelight are just quality. They're they're going to the top because they are quality, simple games to understand, and I think that's great about it. Mm hmm. No, I, I agree. I think, uh, good. I think there's a good uh, multiplayer yeah. push as well. Yeah. For a lot of these. I think multiplayer helps. Um, oh, definitely. I, remember, I, remember, I, remember, I, remember the, at Fre the Five Nights at Freddy era? <laughs> don't say that. Don't think it. Don't say it. They're going to come at all those 12 year olds. They're going to come after you. No. <laughs> that's I don't still going. Apparent, uh, apparently, there's a mobile game for it that's like really active. It's a gotcha game of all things. I, really? I, I, I do. I, I do, though, really appreciate that we're out of the era of, like, uh, really poorly made $1 to free horror games, because those were uh, oh, you know, that's right. terrible. Yeah. 
By the yeah. way, you guys talking about the playtime on Among Us and such made me check. I have 57 hours in Fall Guys. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yay. Cool. Uh, just add crossplay to Fall Guys. I think that'll help. Half my friends have it on PC, half Definitely. us have it on PS4. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would absolutely help a lot. Yeah. All right, By the well, way, they also add a new feature to Among Us where you now can put all of your votes to grey so you don't know who votes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have, have they added that? When did they add that? Uh, yesterday. Oh, I, no, I, we, we must nice. have missed that because I didn't see that. We we're actually having a discussion because there are a few ways. We, we have like, a custom rule set on and we've turned off stuff like visual tasks because we felt like it was making it too hard for the imposters. Uh, but people have found ways around that. Like apparently only one person can use the medbay scan at any one time, meaning that if mm -hmm. you know someone's using it, they're not just faking it. How do yeah. you feel about um, visual tasks and stuff like that? Um, I'm genuinely I, curious. I, I, I So, it, it's 50-50 because I think it makes the game harder. I, I think that putting off visual tasks makes it more of a harder game. Um, I'm more, we are more 50-50 split sometimes on if we put ejects off or on or not. Uh, because we sometimes it, it, it makes ejects um, <laughs> Putting ejects on makes you at least confident and makes the game a bit go faster. But putting ejects off always questions your decisions, and I think I'll appreciate it a whole lot more. Mm. But with um, official tasks, I don't really mind because the only one that really matters in the end is medical scan, and you can just um, go along with somebody else who does medical scan and check if they're actually doing medical scan. Yeah, see, that's the thing, I because I didn't realize this, and we discovered it the other day when me and my friend were both imposter and he got caught because he was trying to fake the medical scan, and he didn't realize that he could actually check that to see if um, it would work. And it's, it's, a bit, it's one of those things that I kind of wish they didn't have as a limiter because it feels like once people realize that, all it all it takes is for like a three people to have med base scan suddenly, I, and I mean, and I would would agree with that if medical scan was a common task, but it isn't. Yeah, maybe I've just had some unlucky games because we've had a game where about three people had med base scan, and so they all just sort of stood there and yeah, one after another, and sometimes. then <laughs> I agree that meant, that meant it limited uh, who our the house killer rule was. in a session. So I have a certain group is that we all do med scan as our last task. Okay. That's a, that's a good one to do it um, with. We just... Uh, I'm trying to think if we have any anything like that. I don't think we do. Obviously, no one talks during the game, but some people waste their emergency things to be like, come with me to med scan to yeah. prove, I'm, prove I'm real. For example, we take it super seriously, so we also have a ghost chat that everybody after the meeting goes to if they're dead. <laughs> uh, see, we, we use the actual type chat for ghost chat, where people people can't speak and talk, but they can talk and type. So that they can actually listen in on the conversations okay, and get mad when you think. Really weird conversation. <laughs> so I think we should move on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. This is an Among Us stream. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, move on to the first topic of our actual schedule. Uh, an hour plus <laughs> in the usual good morning way, and uh, that is um, it's it's kind of a broad one. Uh, it was sort of the main motivation for this week for me. Um, Nintendo has been on the ball recently having something completely brand new to talk about almost every single week since the start of september and it's such a such a big difference from how it's been for most of this year where they've been completely silent and i still remember in august every, all these people all these youtubers being like is nintendo doomed they're making big mistakes not talking about <laughs> anything we know nothing about what's happening now with nintendo but now they've been on the ball almost too much <laughs> like i was complaining about this with tris in that i recorded a video on hyrule warriors <laughs> that i was in the middle of making and then nintendo dropped a whole bunch of information so we reworked the video and then they did it again <laughs> like a few days later <laughs> <laughs> and i had to redo the whole thing again and so um it, it's it's been a bit wild but at the same time we're also sort of possibly coming towards the end of that so I thought it would be fun to talk about what we felt about Nintendo's constant stream of uh, news, especially as sort of people who cover that, and then yeah. also talk about whether we think this is it now for the year, and we've obviously got Steve coming up this week, and then Crown Tundra next week, and we're probably going to get a partner direct 
in the next two weeks. Hey, don't forget Mario Kart Live this coming Friday. Oh yeah, yeah, Mario Kart Live this Friday. So uh, they've got a bunch of stuff coming out now, and October still looks <laughs> somewhat decently packed. But from November onwards, they've only really got Hyrule Warriors um, at that point. So will the new stuff? slow down or are we just going to keep seeing I, this constant news stream until the end of yeah, the year? Yeah, I, I don't think they've said the final thing about 2020 to be completely fair with you. Um, okay. I, I think there will be something else in November. I cannot be completely certain what, but there will be likely something else. Uh, okay, but outside of that, I, I don't think we'll have much else when it comes to this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they would start slowly talking about what they're planning come January, February, March, like the first quarter. Oh, 3D World. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. here's the th- because here's the thing. We're while we're here still struggling with Corona, uh most of Nintendo's developers are in Japan and it's slowly becoming less of a struggle now. Yeah. Um and they have not had an emergency in months. And uh, in fact, they're actually being encouraged to travel by their own government and actually getting paid half of their trips. Huh. Yeah, so I it, do it, wonder if that's actually a good thing. Or, I wonder or if not, it's a good thing. We'll see. We'll I've see. Had. <laughs> but like, um, there is more of an establishment threshold when it comes to um, Japan and the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a chance that we'll get more news in the relatively future. I just don't think it will be until, say, the Game Awards, though. And from that point onward, yeah. we might see a news wave again and again and again, similar. St- that we have seen this September and the end of August. Yeah, I I, I definitely uh, agree with the fact that there's, there's probably going to be something else that we see soon. Not necessarily releasing this year, but just something else soon. Mm-hmm. Because looking, I mean, if if we look at the way the calendar's been played out, and I, I'm literally pulling up the calendar to look at this, um, Nintendo wasn't actually as quiet over the summer as we, or like around the summer as we think they were i guess just it just wasn't as plentiful it was a lot more condensed in like partner stuff and focusing on like paper mario for example but once you hit the end of august was when every week there was something big first party since mm-hmm. paper mario was already out and pikmin had been announced that was when we started having things every single week and all the way up to now i mean so this week this coming week, yes, as as Don, as you mentioned, we have Mario Kart Live releasing at the end of the week. We have Steve releasing on Tuesday. Um, we'll probably get a partner showcase before the end of the month. We have Pikmin releasing at the end of the month. We have Crown Tundra next week. And since we since we've been having a partner showcase every month at this point, around the same time. Yeah. It'll probably be next week or the week after. Yeah. Um, and then there's probably gonna be at least one more big uh presentation showcase trailer question mark for Hyrule Warriors before that gets put in the hands of reviewers like early November. I could see them doing it even when it's in the hands of reviewers to be yeah. perfectly honest. Yeah. Like, so that was that, that, so before that the could end up being embargo. <laughs> so that could even end up being like the first week of November for all we know. Um uh, and then what what becomes tricky is um, when you have holidays in November, like uh, American Thanksgiving and such, which they may not have as much marketing in the U.S. right during that time, then you have Black Friday to think about, and they're probably going to jump up marketing all through November <laughs> for anything that they'll have uh, yeah, deals on for Black Friday and such, since that's become more of an international thing at this point. Um, mm-hmm. And it's just kind of crazy to look at what we have for the rest of the year, even if it isn't like terribly big news, like no, I don't think they'll shadow drop an announcement like they did Hyrule Warriors last month. Um, yeah, I, don't, I still, I do still think there's something small coming in yeah, November. Yeah, some, some sort I, of I don't, think, I, I don't think something big. Not, not the shadow drop announcement of Hyrule Warriors. Um, yeah, something, something like something good job or the stretchers or something. Yeah. On that level. Or, the, or kind of like Kirby bits. Fighters Two, where it's it's oh, it's yeah. a bigger name, but it's a smaller eShop title. Yeah, I could I um, could see that for November December. I it I definitely think it's not really going to slow down too much. I think the biggest slowdown we'll have, honestly, will be near like later into December for like a few weeks, 
and then it'll really drum up again in January because oh man, we got 3D World in a month and we have yeah. everything to show off for that game. <laughs> I mean, and, I think yeah, it's I a I think it's a situation where I, I they've shown off enough that realistically, I mean, it's it's basically been uh what we've been saying like like all year like nintendo has enough and they have that rising momentum that really realistically they could just stop at any point sure yep. and and just like they'd be fine because i think generally what is agreed upon is that nintendo strategy coming up is probably just to undercut the next gen consoles um like i i think we're going to see a price cut on the switch just just for the holidays do you think they'll announce it the week the the next gen consoles come out uh probably <laughs> around that time and in, in, in <laughs> like just just to give way for black friday <laughs> um granted a pair there's there's also a second reason why they may be doing that but you know, that's another discussion <laughs> um but yeah i think i think we're gonna see a price cut and i think uh i, I mean i think that's why we're seeing like the animal crossing switches come back because yep. they're they're gonna bank really hard on that on that back catalog of switch titles um i think we're gonna still see the partner showcases which i i still think are a good idea Same. i still think they're perfectly fine here here's I'm... here's a hot take on the partner showcases. i thought the one in august was just fine yeah, I yeah, thought I I, th I thought every single one of them has been fine. I, I I know it's like, I know it's like ah they didn't show Mario too, so, but it's so like I, people I, were <laughs> people people were kind of mad about the July one, um surprisingly so, um but like the August one in particular, people were really ragging on it, and I was like, but most of those games that were in the August one really appealed to me. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> well, that's, that, 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 <laughs> That's the thing. We play third-party games on the Nintendo Switch, and right. hardcore Nintendo fans don't. So it's really, uh, you know, that I mean, like the the September one, of course, had the the big big name big dick ones with like two Monster Hunter games and really. this Gaia Six, and you know, like just like all this stuff. But I like I don't know. I've I've had like two or three games to be yeah. happy about to look forward to in each one which uh, is like the point they're just 10 minute commercials they're like they're yeah. not meant to be mm -hmm. anything else but here's Honestly, the, here's the thing in in the august one uh I, I was super surprised to see those uh taiko rpgs coming over because those were yeah, yeah, yes for ages yeah yeah and and seeing those coming over that's really gosh darn cool and then at the end with boy boy tetris 2 which is coming out in literally two months. Yeah, I don't understand why I, this this weird like uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris Two. It's like one of the like it's like the cult game of the generation. Yeah, really. <laughs> like it's 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 a beloved classic of the eighth generation of video gaming. <laughs> um, people think... are just weird. I just think they're yeah. they're, they're they're super irky about third party games, which they yeah. shouldn't be because mm -hmm. most of the stuff we've been getting recently has been honestly really good. And mm -hmm. it's gonna suck yeah. because I I guarantee you the next partner direct will not be as high key as the last one, and people are gonna lose their fucking nut about it, and I'm gonna be really sad because I bet they're gonna announce like they're gonna announce something really neat, something really cool. They're probably yeah. gonna announce like Crisis Four exclusive to Nintendo Switch, but everyone's <laughs> gonna be like, yeah, but uh, uh, it wasn't the same as showing off a new Monster Hunter, and it's gonna be like okay. <laughs> It's not a competition, <laughs> but people compare them all as if they. But are. that is that is the weird thing is that like <laughs> it's so weird when people are like, I give the partner showcase a six. Like I don't rate presentations because they're just commercials, and not every yeah. game is going to appeal yeah. to me. It, it, exactly. To be, to be also completely fair, the, the August one was filled with with rhythm and music games, and I was super was. pumped about yeah. that. Too. Yeah, yeah, there, there was there was a lot there. I, I think a big thing that people had with the August one, unlike the first one, well, the first one could be chalked up to the fact that people went into it with way too high expectations, and even though they had Shin Megami Tensei Five and the Three remake, which were both amazing, yeah, the, people went into them with too high expectations, and not everyone. Is into Shin Megami Man, that, that still plus there was only me off plus for like you the know, American like... direct at least there was only like four games I think. Showed yeah. off, so my, it was my problem few. with the original partner showcase is that it gives too little information because, for example, yeah. with Rogue mm -hmm. Company, 
Uh, I, oh, yeah, I've they showed playing... nothing. It was like a cinematic. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, no, they showed a half minute of gameplay. Um, okay. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed Rogue Company. I, I have a good downloaded. Game, yeah. It's, it's a really fun game. They didn't even mention the fact it would launch in Founders Edition beta later, later that, day. that day. Yeah. Instead, yeah. they announced it in like a second commercial on like the Jeff Keighley Summer Game Fest stream. Oh my God, like, right. like two hours <laughs> later. It was so weird. Yeah, so there were some problems with the first one. I think the issue with the second one is while they had a lot of really cool games, and I liked a lot of the games on there, Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, the Taiko Drum Master RPGs, it didn't have one of those big name blowouts that they did a big focus on like they had with doesn't Monster Hunter and Megami Tensei. Though, uh, it, doesn't have mean... to, it doesn't have to, absolutely, but I think that's a big reason why a lot of people were down, more down on the August one, yeah. because it didn't have that one big game Nintendo made a big key kick about towards the end or beginning so, of it. So what, you're, so what you're saying, basically, is that people have too high expectations for their Nintendo presentations. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, see, see, I <laughs> and think... They get annoying. And, and it's, it's, I, I, I personally think the only one of the partner showcases that was meh to me was the one in July, like the first one, and not because of the content in it, but because it was, I'm pretty sure that was the shortest one, and it didn't really feel like it was finished, if that makes sense. Like, you mentioned they were Roka, it just didn't kind of make sense the way they did it. They I really should that... have included the games that were in the Japanese one, because yeah. like, those are yeah. those are also exactly. like, coming stateside around the same time, exactly. so and they it, it, have included it those. Rushed. It didn't feel like it was finished properly, and it felt too short to bother putting into that presentation. Like, yeah, putting that presentation right. for it, but all the ones since the august one the september one those have been perfectly fine those make sense for the the branding i guess but the july one just didn't now the the, the special thing i'll add on here is i think all the partner showcases have been better than the treehouse live that they did over the summer for paper mario and the mystery game <laughs> oh, where oh, nobody <laughs> nobody on that stream seemed interested in bakugan and i felt so bad for even like the developers <laughs> on it but hey man, hey man, Bakugan is going to mo- be the most hyped game that this November. <laughs> <laughs> Bakugan's so good. Where's Bakugan too? Should be announced by now. I do, I do, fe- like genuinely feel bad for some of these development teams that like, yeah, yeah. They, they're they're partnering up with Nintendo to produce like uh, a commercial for their video game that if they had just like dropped themselves like would be otherwise ignored mm-hmm. and then they just get like loads of shit because people are like that's not hype oh, give me hype and it's like bro like they just they just want you to play their video game yeah they just, they I, I have their video games to be one noticed. last note on the uh the frequency of nintendo's news updates in general um i really don't like how they handled the release of kirby fighters 2 because oh, yeah. that yeah. The, the 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 forewarning we got on that release was that it, they leaked it themselves a day early, yeah. um, and otherwise it it was announced and released the same at, at the same moment like the next night, and noticed no, nobody really covered this and uh, this other thing and it really wasn't marketed well. That same as that moment was when the third arguably biggest dlc pack for cadence of hyrule released yes. that time the the pack three the symphony of the mask whatever it's called with skull kid and that was also a big deal i think nintendo tweeted about it once and they then they focused on kirby and i know uh kirby releasing what it did also kind of screwed over the rivals of aether definitive edition on switch yeah because that's think- the same kind of thing a platform fighter and it it stole all the tension from that and yeah, I, I, a, lot, oh, totally. a lot of things that screwed I, up the rivals of aether thing i mean they weren't in that yeah. indie presentation that nintendo did just before which had a lot of them yep. but i went so uh, rivals of aether i mean they, they they tweeted out that the game was out but they only tweeted out that it was out in north america so i had to go on to the eShop myself to see if it was out in europe and it yep. was but it seemed to be the first game added that day Along okay. with eighteen uh, other games, games so it you... wasn't even on okay. the front page. Mm. I had to scroll down like a good half a page and bit a plus just to find out that the game was actually out over here. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of stuff screwed over the launch of Rivals Vader, which yeah. is an absolute shame. It's a game that a lot of people have been waiting 
to come to Switch. Yeah. The Switch feels like the most okay. natural fit uh, for it. I need. I'm going to rant for about two minutes. Okay, you have to <laughs> give me the floor. <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> Can I swear, by the way? Yes, yeah. Colin's been doing it all okay. stream. Cool. <laughs> I, yeah. I fucking hate how Nintendo handles eShop releases in this era. All the way since 2017, they have not given eShop games the right sense of day. The fact that the eShop still hasn't a good way to feature content that is really good irks me completely the wrong way, and screw that. Like, Nintendo has done those indie presentations. I get it. They try to do their best. But those indie presentations don't help. Like you need to constantly push good games out of the door and help ensure that it sees an audience. The fact that that bad shit games and uh, the best content out there are on the same page, ranked the same, and have no differentiating features beneath them on the eShop annoys me the wrong way. Give them like a star. Give them like a top pick feature. Do something. Ensure that games are seen. Because at some point... People get so annoyed with this that they're just going to go away from Switch. And we still see a lot of content there. We see like 28 games every single week. That's not sustainable, especially for a small developer that doesn't have that big of a marketing budget. If they really want to ensure that games keep selling, they need to ensure that games are seen. And that is the most important thing that they're, that they're lacking right now. Yeah, I agree. I think the most telling thing was that um I don't know if you saw it the Twitter thread by that game developer. They've released like four games on the eShop and they did they ran a few experiments uh checking stuff out where they looked at metacritic, very mm. selective about their stuff, gave it big discounts when it started, did all these experiments to see what would sell and came to the sort of obviously not a fully objective because it's just a small time study, but yeah. found that you get it a good Metacritic score, you give it a good discount when it launches, like and a good like fifty percent plus discount, and it will end up being pushed, regardless of quality, up to the top page. Because it seems like I the way people have had party... to look around think... from the eShop to notice games is by going to Metacritic and seeing what's new on there, seeing what the goods what the value yeah, is from that. The thing, then the working backwards consumer... and also seeing what's cheap yeah. and below and under yeah. a certain price. I think third-party publishers have been catching on to that as well, because I think a lot of them are getting around mm. the whole, like, Switch tax thing mm -hmm. by, like, here's a perfect example. 2K put out, what was it, like, Bioshock, Borderlands, and XCOM all in the same day. Yeah, oh, And, right. like, they were, they were all full-priced, but they knew full well that, like, they could just two weeks later put it at, like, $30 on discount. Right. And now, and now those games are, like, even though they're not actually, like, like priced at thirty dollars, they're just on like a weird permanent sale forever, and yeah, it's like you know people are now buying it because now yeah, they're, they're the, reasonably the price priced that people now. are more I, reasonably paying. I, I I see so many said Nintendo fan crying about eShop releases in Lehman. No, I'm crying for developers. Yeah, because they yeah. are they are in the in the end making this content. They are trying to push out games out the door. They're trying to bring it to an audience. If the audience isn't there, the audience isn't supported. So what they need to do is ensure that that content that's cool needs to be seen by a interesting consumers. So bring it to many casual outlets as possible. Bring it to their Twitter channel. Bring it to their social media. Ensure that content is seen. When, for example, Trish mentioned that the the latest DLC for Kindness of Hyrule was tweeted about once. That's a joke. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's and, Zelda and, and that's, content. Yeah, that's Zelda. Like that's a big deal. That's yeah. that should have gotten like a week's worth of attention because the other packs did. I don't yeah. know what. Like like that was that that, 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 that was a bizarre because I didn't even know it came out. Yeah. Until it came out, like the, this was the big part of the DLC, and all the others got some sort of big push towards you know and got a, an actual release date before they came out yeah and this was always sort of listed to october like and all that and then it tweets. suddenly <laughs> came out being like yep final pack is out today go get it and everyone was, but also here's kirby and um yep. that was and that and then, and then an, an indie reel which had a, a, bun, a few of the indie games that released that day but a lot of them didn't and then uh, yep. it was just completely chaotic yeah, yeah. And, and and the and the fact that 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 Rivals of Ether wasn't promoted even once by nope. Nintendo on the day it came out, when Kirby Fighters Two released the same day, clearly shows their freaking oversight. I am mm -hmm. sorry, they've mm -hmm. handled eShop games over the last year pretty darn bad. Yeah, yeah, they really have. Like, 
I, I think it would have been slightly more excusable if Kirby Fighters 2 was announced even just a week in advance so people knew it was coming and the Rousery, the devs could literally try to reach out to Nintendo to try to set up some way that they can have their content, you know, promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, but like when you just shadow drop it like that, you, you screw over anything else releasing at that time. And it's hard to say you're being indie friendly when the only real way of showing it is the indie worlds. And that's really it. Yeah. And then yeah. ignoring most others. It's it's a shame. Mm -hmm. it's a, it is an absolute yeah. shame. It's something they definitely need to work like, on. I, I, I talk to the developers like by the week. And, and <laughs> I and I just get annoyed for them because yeah. this situation isn't clearly isn't changing. They had all the time in the world to fix this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they aren't. And the fact that uh, their PR is tagging along with this entire thing is worse. In America, you just get a list of games. Most of them are all, all listed under also this week. Maybe give them some information or at least a price point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In Europe, they are going a step further. They almost moved the entirety of their press release, only highlighting one or two games. And for the rest, oh, click on a web page on, on the Nintendo UK or, Nint or on any of the European Nintendo sites to see what the entire list is. What? Are you yeah. joking? That's just lazy and doesn't take much time to add the name, the, just even the list of names it's of your, the games it's, to a It's your PR. store. You're getting a cut yeah. from these games. It will be beneficial yep. to you to promote them. Yep. Yep. It's so, uh, bad. Pur Purple X com Compl Complete X uh, says, isn't that on the indie dev to pay for being featured in these kinds of advertisements? Nah. Yeah, no, yes and yes no. And no like, yeah. it, obviously, it's not obviously, uh, so obviously, it would help to promote your game somewhat. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it is also on Nintendo to help pr foster a good relationship with said developers and allowing them to create a space where their games can thrive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they currently aren't doing that. Yeah, it feels like the only reason developers are putting their games on Nintendo platforms is because they've always been big fans of Nintendo and so always wanted to have their games on the platform on on a any yep. Nintendo platform exactly. exactly because otherwise there isn't major benefits and the eShop is very quickly becoming like the Steam page was from years ago and potentially still is although it's talks on that has wrapped down a bit it doesn't have all of the obvious stupid ash asset flips that Steam had because it's much easier to develop games and port them to Steam, but it mm -hmm. is got a lot of garbage on the eShop, and is it? They're releasing like eighteen plus games a week, many yeah. of which are not worth anyone's time. To be perfectly honest, I, I, I actually have a spreadsheet of this. The last four Gosh. months, every week has been above twenty five games. See, wow, there you go, <laughs> twenty five games per week. They're they're trying to get rid of that. They're trying to go for the the Switch has games. But it is purely they're doing a quantity over quality thing, and all the yeah. actual quality games are getting drowned out and have to rely <laughs> on their own marketing or just word of mouth or being a sequel yeah. for a game that, that that's come out um, I have, that was already popular. I have uh, one, one thing to bring up here that's actually more of a question, but before we might want to change topics because you've been on the show. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Um, and also getting kind of tilted, so let's yeah. quickly move on. <laughs> I, 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 this is an actual question that I have, um, since you've been sure. keeping track of it a lot, Don. Yeah. Um, has the quality of what's been able to get on the eShop compared to what's considered shovelware, has that gotten better since the Wii U era? Because I'm still, like, uh, baffled by... I'm, I'm sure you might remember this. You did a video on this years ago. The sure. art, That horrible archery game. Yes. On the view that was made in like an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's. I so, think the jury is out on a lot on a lot of stuff like that because like there's because <laughs> like half of it has like half of the things that we denote as shovelware to some degree probably does have like some iota of like effort into it and mm -hmm. is maybe just a smaller project by a smaller developer because that's i think what um that's what Gabe Newell said in regards to the whole shovelware thing on Steam where he was like well we can't dictate right. what is and isn't good right like but... we, we can't play like uh, obviously like they they 
there is like a huge chunk of games where you're like oh yeah that just looks like hot garbage <laughs> but like there's a lot of games where you know it might just be like some small pixel platformer that's made by like two guys who are actually secretly passionate and it's like how you know it, mm. it's but without you, you, playing you, you, it it's really hard to kind of no, right. no, gauge no. No, of course. Um, the the reason why I gave the the archery example yeah. is because that that looked like it was made in a three hour game jam. Yeah, it yeah. uses like Unity free assets. It has like no UI, and right. it looks like they spent. It looks like they challenged themselves to see can I get this to function in a day. And either way, I'm gonna upload it to the eShop. For, for me, yeah. you can you can in in the first five minutes of a game. You can mm-hmm. tell if if it was a bad or a good idea, or if they were passionate or not. Yeah. And for me, like the majority of of stuff I've been seeing over the last, say, four months, mm-hmm. is that there is definitely a section of small developers who have good intentions, but not sure how they did it. Okay. But there's also a good chunk of it still that still releases games really nitty without even thinking about it. Like yeah. there are a no. a certain uh publishers or developers that have an entire catalog of that sort of stuff oh boy okay um <laughs> and uh, one of them that come to mind and i hate calling out publishers and developers but i have to point this out sebek sebek has not put out a game that i've enjoyed I'm trying to remember who what game sebek they're, made. They're, they're, <laughs> they're constantly they're constantly on sale uh they constantly go to the top of the eShop no matter the region, both in, all in Japan, Europe, and North America. Um, and their games have been very low effort, low quality. One of the games is called, literally called Basketball, and it's literally one oh, of yeah. the worst games that mm-hmm. I've played during the entire existence of Switch. I feel like you were talking about this the first Good Morning Source gaming we had you on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's correct. Circle. It's come full circle. <laughs> yeah. And they're still pumping out games by the month. Wow. Wow, oh, jeez. I'm trying to I'm just having a look at them. I found basketball now and I just <laughs> want to take a look at the sort of games they release. Uh... <laughs> but uh, they're not I... great. But yeah, there are publishers it. like that. There are a bunch of publishers that just release almost there are publishers that even release bi weekly games. Yeah, I'm you not got, sure you how. Got to question that. That's why Nintendo needs to go back to the five games per year thing they did during the NES era. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but but it's it's yeah, really bizarre need... to it's really bizarre to think about, you know, mm-hmm. um, where for, for example, we heard a lot about, for example, Kid Cream Black, and it's it's a game that I honestly really love, and I saw just saw it in the chat. That game is now almost a dollar on the eShop just to get some additional sales in the door. Wow. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a dollar on um Steam as well right now. It's, it's uh, a few do- not a few dollars. I think like dollars. 250 or something. Well, I think I I, yeah. I do think okay. there's an issue though with with games like Killer Queen Black where it's like it's it's a it's a fairly niche kind of like arcade thing, but yeah. it's also something that like on release Discord was giving away for free. So like it makes sense that like someone yeah. on switch maybe but, wasn't gonna pay 20 dollars for it but uh, yeah but at the same time if your niche game or middle class game needs to be sold at a heavy discount to be sold i don't think that's a healthy thing no it's no, not it's but definitely not it's it, the, the problem is there are people that are just like yeah but i can get it for way cheaper on pc even if they're not like a pc gamer it's like if it's a, if it's a smaller indie game yeah i, I mean once again totally get that i can I think, see that i think at but, the but, bottom it, but, run, but, it, but it also makes the entire ecosystem of the switch completely screwed up i think at the bottom rung mm-hmm. there should be more enforcement on games that are that are just clearly like untextured like the 3d models are just cubes and shit like that like stuff that is like here's, very clearly being made right. in like an hour and like here's that. the thing here's the thing Here's the thing. I don't blame consumers even one single bit because getting a deal is getting a deal. Mm-hmm. That, that's yeah. something you always have to get down to. Where where I put the blame on is basically how the eShop is designed, basically how the eShop is laid out, and how certain games get to the top. 
because basically it's a shortcut. Yeah. yeah, discount your game a ridiculous amount. Tons of people pick it up because it's cheap. It ends up on the number one in the top ten selling of the shops, and that just leads more people to buy it, even yep. after you've increased the price a bit. Uh, As I said, I think I think it's I think generally it is something that is a there is a little bit more nuance to it, especially once you start kind of getting into like the middle rung of games of of stuff that's like Mm -hmm. particularly made with 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 fairly low budgets, but but semi high aspirations. Mm -hmm. But but like it's yeah, I think generally. I do think they are doing some slight improvements to the eShop because they're now they're now pushing for like screenshots appear when you highlight over a game and stuff. Uh but yeah, like I, I think like a a better featured page is like absolutely needed. Yeah. Yeah, and the- But but yeah, as River said, I don't I don't think it's exclusively a Switch problem either. I think it's just a thing with all uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. Let me let me tell you why. There are pretty solid featured page- pages on on PS- a PSN and the Xbox Game Store um, that showcase games that they personally believe in. There is no such thing on Switch, like yeah. at all. The, like the even the feature is page bare is completely bare bones. It's the same tiles as the upcoming page, and I think in in Europe they at least include some text. In America, they don't even give a description of what why this game is good or not. Yeah, I, I think having a reviews section for user reviews and at least a simple scoring system would probably go a long way. Because as it is right now, all you can do it is by genre, yeah. publisher, and price, yeah. basically. And so that's the only way things ever get categorized. And it doesn't look very intuitive either. I mean, I have problems with the no. PlayStation stores, but at least there's more options there. And it's easier to yeah. get around and find specific games. It's just not like that on the Switch at all, and I just don't understand why. Because the Wii U and Wii, even the Wii shop was better than <laughs> what the eShop is. The, the Wii U is... eShop was, despite for all the the crap that the Wii U got, mm. it was one of the best digital stores out there. Yeah, it, it yeah. was really well. Despite some stuff coming on, the the, best, the good stuff still rose to the top. In addition, they had large chunky tiles to promote stuff that I really believed in. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, let's let let's, 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 let's let you start yeah. getting heated over the eShop yeah, stuff. Yeah, let, let's move on <laughs> to a thing. So I think, Don, you might have to leave shortly. Um, yes, so... I have to have dinner, and then after that I will be back to have other, other talks, but uh, maybe yeah. that's it for me today. But, yeah, if there's anything you want to say... Um, to everybody then before you head off and i mean if you also let people know where they can find you and all that um then yeah <laughs> this is this is your time now dan take it away <laughs> uh yeah uh you can find me on uh twitter at nintendo n-a-n-t-e-n-d-a-n don't do as much stuff as i used to right now i'm taking sort of a sabbatical um outside of that yeah just hit me up if you need anything i'm just uh Looking for new opportunities and other stuff to do things. Um, for the rest, I'm just yeah, I'm I'm just look, keeping my eyes and ears open. That's the most thing I'm doing right now. Right. Good. Well, follow yeah, Don on Twitter, and you'll find out what he's going to be, what what new exciting things he'll have coming up, uh, and where to find them. Uh, yeah. Whenever well. Don streams, check them out. They're really fun. I enjoy watching. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I should take part in some of your streams. I know you did some with Brett. Um, uh, last week i think that seemed quite right. fun should definitely do some of that with you <laughs> yeah i'm definitely down anyway um yeah i yep. i'm off to have dinner um i hope, and I hope it's you... very lovely <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, and everybody needs me just hit me up on twitter All right, we'll do. thank you very much for joining us this week Dan. no we'll worries have at you all. more see you guys later bye bye see you later bye bye so Don, yep, had to leave uh, early for reasons just there, but we did have a few more talking points uh, we can get through um, before we before we all wrap up as well today. Yeah, we're um, already getting to like the two hour mark. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. And there, there, there was a few things that 
<laughs> I, I think I think the, the the main thing that we haven't talked about because we've talked about Steve in Smash a few times and it was mainly on there yeah. just for in case Darn wanted to mention it. Um, because but obviously we'll have more to talk about that next week when uh, it actually Steve is actually out and um, <laughs> people people have had a ch- we've all had a chance to play him. Uh, but right. I did want to bring up um, Super Mario Brothers 35 because I don't actually think we've talked about it on this uh, channel yet. And that's obviously a sort of big Nintendo Switch Online mm-hmm. game that they've released. Uh, have, either, have both of you guys been playing it? Or have you played it yet? Yeah, yeah but I haven't won at all. <laughs> I keep... <laughs> are, you, are, you the, are you the guy who always dies to the first Goomba every single time? <laughs> There's always uh, one. <laughs> I, I've played it a couple times. The first time I played it, I got into third place. Um, nice. because uh-huh. it's it's easy. <laughs> I, I mean, it's if you if you like if you know the ins and outs of Super Mario Brothers one. Uh, like I found the easiest strategy in the long run is to just yeah. um is just to keep rotating between World One One and World One Two, yeah. just <laughs> over and over and over again because you, you can just. <laughs> you can just you can just do the thing where you hop up to the top of one two. Mm-hmm. So like the those fifty thousand goombas and shit that they're dropping on you, they can't do shit. <laughs> and then yeah. if you have to, you can jump back down and then just like fireball like twenty of them for extra time, and then just jump back up. See, so and you, then just you warp want pipe to... to go back to. Uh... <laughs> See, this is the thing: so... you want to fight the fifty billion goombas down there because we get the one Koopa Trooper to knock it out. But especially in one one and one two, there are some very mm. easy stars that you can get yeah, that basically make the game easy. one two. Especially the star can basically take you through the entire level. So yeah. you can even just plow even one anything. four, even one four is pretty easy because if you have the fire flat, like like I, I it's really funny because there's like just so many people that are like oh I fucking like there's like twenty thousand goombas and it's like yeah but like if you're in one four which is a corridor, <laughs> you can just you can just fireball them repeatedly and just yeah like, you're good. I'll tell you what, I will boot up mario 35 now and see if i can get a win before the end of good morning Swiss game. <laughs> oh my god i can talk and play this is fine this is totally fine <laughs> see i see I, I actually won at least 10 to 20 games now at this point i'm actually something like level 40 wow. something in the game already uh i'm trying to get th- i'm trying to get through the whole game um because obviously the way it works is they gave you levels one th- one to two four to start with but you have to unlock the rest of the levels by at least playing them once but yeah. it doesn't even if you go in order don't take the warp zones you don't necessarily go to what would be the next logical level it's yeah. sometimes a bit random so you just have to keep trying to push forward you can do the one 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 two strategy if you just want to win but if you actually want to play more levels you have to just keep pushing forward until you finally hit the new level that you haven't done <laughs> but yeah um, i, I... It does I have, a have friend who, weird like, pacing issues. Um, I have a friend who got like first, pa- like first place, like I think second game he played. It's I I think that wow. might be the reason why it might be uh limited is because it it doesn't. I feel like it's it's easy enough that like it doesn't really it won't have a lot of longevity, and that might yeah, be why it's, it's, it's not the same yeah. Centers. I mean, granted, they could you know update it. If they wanted to keep it around, yeah, and like, I mean, there were supposed other games and stuff, but yeah, there's supposedly hints in the game files that they might include other games, like all the courses and stuff, and the files are specifically le- uh, labeled Maybe as the this Super is like Mario a trial Brothers run, one and they're version. gonna relaunch the game as like NES 35. Maybe that that, that would be cool. more interesting, yeah, and like the sort of new take on NES Remix. Yeah. And SNES, oh, yeah, yeah. Actually would have been really... It'd be a lot better than NES Remix. I yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, um... I, I, I like it, but you, people are right. The game has a weird pacing issue where you end up in. If you if, if everyone that you're playing with is actually pretty decent, you end up locked with like, so like the top three people are just constantly doing it. And the only way you can win is if when someone makes a mistake. Like the only time well, yeah, I've cause... ever lost in this game isn't because someone's killed me. I've either completely botched a jump like usually like the very first jump in like world one four or something and completely messed it up or i've just accidentally run into something like i i have actually died on the first goomba a few times 
Now I think, first good I mean, one, I, one. <laughs> I, I said this during our Mario uh, 35th anniversary direct discussion where I was like, like, if you're really good at Mario one, which it's not, it's not hard to like people have perfected like Mario, like one speed running for like decades now. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. If, if you're decent at like the first few levels of super Mario brothers, like it's, yeah. it's yeah. Like you're, you're, I mean, like granted there is the whole thing where it's like, Oh yeah, you can spawn on a later stage and, and like the yeah. warp pipes are kind of random and can just take you to just various random levels across yeah. the, uh, the entirety of the game. But it's like, it it also just feels a little too easy to cheese. Like it almost feels like I'm not playing the game like they wanted me to, but it's it, it's Mario. Like there's not really yeah. like mm. there's, there's not a lot like for you example, why it. wouldn't you take the the secret pipe in one one to get all those coins? Like why why wouldn't you to just skip like most of the level? Well, I th I, I think actually the reason why because obviously you'd survive fighting all the Goombas. But you're not doing any attacking there, which you, mm -hmm. which is what you want yeah, to do. Yeah, but it's, it is, it's it's more it's, optimal. It's to over just with go in like through. two seconds. That's the thing. Yeah, but you're not trying to get to the end of the game. That, that that's what I realized after playing a few times. The goal of Mario Brothers 35 isn't to get to the end of Super Mario Brothers. The goal is to kill as many enemies as possible and get as many coins as possible. No, I those I get are the that, ways that you I'm win the game. Is that like? It, in a game where the timer is always ticking down and you need to you need to like you know manage like time yeah. it's it's one of those things where like obviously you take the shortcut because like that you could because that's a still a better strategy than having to take time and get through a section that's like a lot more hectic see i think even if you might on... be gaining more points for doing that like you're saving yourself like 10 seconds by just cutting through getting a bunch of coins and no see i the see end. i don't think that's the case because getting coins doesn't increase your timer but killing enemies does and getting power ups does so maybe at the well, start the when coins, you first the, go, one the coins one. go for power ups which is yeah, the like coins basically give you the power a big safety thing. net yeah they give you yeah. a big safety net but once you get about 200 or 300 coins which is pretty easy to do they they don't become very relevant anymore and it's all about trying to get as much keeping your power ups and getting as much enemy death as possible because that increases your time and when it comes to doing like that you only really want to take shortcuts on levels that are particularly bad like one one and one two just well one two you can do because the shortcut's not really a shortcut it, yeah. it only goes forward a tiny bit it's just for getting coins but the one 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 is never worth doing because it's you can get more coins and get more points by grabbing the secret one up that's right behind the pipe then getting the power up, then getting the superstar and the coin block, grabbing the last power up, and then you get to the end anyway, and you've plowed through mount like a warrior's game worth of Goombas that people are throwing at you. Ah, <laughs> no, this is the true Mario Warriors game, I see. Yeah, <laughs> I just I, I I I just find so much. Um, that's that's the thing though, Cody, is that uh, because because he's saying like, oh, you could say the same thing about Mario Kart. Why not just always take the shortcut? And I because I think the power ups. Not not just like the standard power ups, but you also like just just you know like the, the, you know the what you get the coins for, right? Um, those are really powerful. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. like block? the like, pow kind of the pow block. Yeah, like the pow block is is like it's so good. Yeah, the pow block is very very helpful <laughs> like Especially that was the reason why i got in such a you. high place is because i would just hold on to the pow block go to one two go to the area that's like swarming with koopas and goombas drop it and then boom i have like an extra minute <laughs> <laughs> that is true yeah. and that is the strategy that's the thing with coins yeah. i don't quite get because coins obviously get added to your total point there's a coin ranking but I'm not quite sure what the actual benefit of getting a ton of coins are. Is this what they actually is experience and I just haven't noticed? So, or... with the coins, uh, obviously you get to keep the coins at the yeah. end. And it's because you can, you can redeem the coins to start around with a power-up of some kind. I never see the benefit of that. You don't, especially for like the superstar. If you're, if you're always starting on 1-1, one, one, there, is, there is not enough enemies there to like warrant having a star 
Well, because you're just so, going to wait. You're going to run out of it by the time you reach halfway through the level. I figured out a bit about how the game works. You, it's not that you're always starting on 1-1. One, one. So you know how, like, when you start up the actual round, it's like, oh, yeah, like, pick a course, and then yeah. it doesn't actually matter if you go to 1-1 one, one anyway. Yeah, that it picks a pool of courses. So pretty much what, what that means is you're going to... The reason why you keep playing 1-1 one, one, and 1-2 one, is because everyone else is voting for 1-1 one, one, and 1-2. One, so that adds like twenty of them into the pool. Right. Okay. <laughs> of course. So you're when, picking I think what level you want to start on. is when you go to new things. I think, or obviously someone who managed to get further and put in something new, you, you'll go to their course. You know I what? That might ex- that might explain a lot. I wonder if there's an an element of because obviously I've never gone further than the stage I've unlocked, and I'm assuming yeah. this is the same for everyone. I'm assuming everyone has the same pool of courses. So I wonder if. The court because the you sometimes you you finish one two the normal route and end up back in one one or end up in two one. Yep. So as, I, as I just did. <laughs> yeah. So 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 I'm wondering whether or not the it takes all thirty five courses picked oh, by the thirty five players and then combines them all and then you just play through all thirty five of those ones and that's yes. why people keep getting one one and one two again because yeah, so no, many I'm people. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And then once it runs out of the ones that all the players redeemed. I think that is when um, it starts giving you like the next ones in order, so to say. Well, I only I only kept looping between one one and one two is because when you go to the warp pipe at the end of one two, like mm. it was. It yeah, only gives yeah, you it, it, yeah, yeah, it, gives it you only gives you there. so much. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I mean, I, I've had it where I've just finished a level normally and ended up back at one one without yeah. doing a pipe. Yeah. It it is it is sometimes just random, but that actually makes a lot of sense, Tris. And it, it just reminded me that there's actually a special the next special event in Mario Thirty Five started. Uh, what is two it? days ago? I, I, I didn't get a chance to look at it. Yeah, I'm still. In, uh, I don't know, but it. I know it goes for up to like at least World Four Four. So that's why I wanted to do it, so I could try to oh, do, okay. do it on some new levels. <laughs> but, but yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, I I mean, like obviously, like the the nuance of something like Tetris is not there. Yeah, so it, yeah. Like I, I maybe like maybe it's one of those things where they they're the reason why they're limited because they they wanted to see if like it would have longevity if it would become like a smash hit like Tetris ninety nine did, but at the like to see if they could maybe you know do like the NES thirty five thing later. Um, but it, I think I've seen a lot of people who have played it and then just kind of like, all right, I've had my fill. And then, yeah. you know, I've seen that a lot too. Yeah. So yeah, especially because want... there's also people who who for some reason think it plays weird, despite the fact that it just plays like Mario One, and people are just <laughs> used to like new Mario soup Maker. physics. Yeah, they, yeah. Used, they used to well, play Mario, Mario Maker Mario versus Mario, Mario Maker. One. The original Mario Bros. plays a bit differently in Mario Maker. No, they they all play like new soup. They all yeah. play like uh, yeah. new soup. Yep. So it's that it play in this case that it plays like actual normal Mario Bros. as it should. Yeah, which is it, I really hate that people are like, oh, it plays weird. It's like no, it plays not slow. <laughs> yeah. It plays it plays like the Quake One Mario we're all familiar with. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I do wonder if the, when they remove it whether we'll get another one because obviously it's Zelda's anniversary next year, and I was trying to think what they could do for a Legend of Zelda. 35 or whatever yeah like i kind of hope they would do it. like nes 35 i NES mean it'd be 35, really i think it, would be the core it'd be really jarring to switch it. between like mario one and like urban champion but I, i'd be down <laughs> for it <laughs> i so think that's go... how you get well no because they did that in nes remix they would have like the 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 special challenges where you were jumping from like game to game within like the same stretch yeah they did and, I think and that be, obviously would add a lot more nuance to that, it. What like they that, should that do make it is like, ooh. make it like the legend. There's Link to the Past Super Metroid hacks where it's the two games in one. You just go into like yeah. a room in Legend of Zelda and suddenly you're playing Balloon Fight, and then you yeah. finish the level in Balloon Fight and suddenly dropped into Super Mario Brothers World One Four or something like that. <laughs> and it just it, go, it goes on like that. That'd be funny. Yeah, that's um I I'm, I'm enjoying Mario 35 uh but it isn't as good as Tetris. It's definitely got problems. I'm in top but, 5 yeah. right now by the way. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. I And yeah, well, I suppose the, because the only other the only other thing I was going to bring up was Nintendo's random ass streamhouse treehouse stream 
last week, uh, which I wonder if they'll do more of that. Um, I mean, stuff. this was the first one since what, what was the last one? June, July? I don't remember when the Paper Mario and Bakugan was one was. Um, was that was a uh, beginning of August. No, wait, no, because Paper Mario wasn't out by then, so it would have been yeah. yeah. So it had been beginning of July, I think. Then is wow. when that happened. Um, but th this stream was really strange, mainly because um. They had obviously the two sections, the Hyrule Warriors and Pikmin 3, but the production value on both of them were completely different. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt like the. They Pik filmed in two different times. Yeah, like the, the Pikmin 3 one felt like it was done in a studio and felt very similar to the E3 ones. Yeah. But then the, Mar the, the Legend of Zelda one was clearly done with people's own personal recording equipment yep. and stuff and just done like as if friends were playing it. And it's. I actually preferred the Hyrule Warriors one. No, don't want to um, poop all over the performances of the Treehouse members, but I found the Pikmin right. one very stale. When I think it's because it, it, it was it was a rather long drawn out. Here's what Pikmin is. Yeah, uh, that didn't and help. For, for uh, having to show it, for the first half of the Pikmin one, it was kind of weird because it sounded like they were like purposely trying to be quiet, like. Like, like how you do when you're on, like, a phone call, but someone else is in the same room, so you try not to be, like, disruptive. <laughs> That's what it sounded like they were doing. It was weird. Yeah. But then as they started playing multiplayer, it's like, right, right. It's just us. We're, we're, we're in the same room. We can be louder. We can talk. We can have energy with this. Yeah. Uh, I, I, to be fair, it must have been tough to try and sell Pikmin 3 to, pe to a lot of people when the game is basically, you know, it's already out. People can play it. Yeah. Like they're going through showing they it's fine to show off some of the features and when they actually did co op mode that was good. That was great. But all the beginning part before they'd even unlock co op mode. It's like, well here here is what a Pikmin is and here is what Pikmin do and it's like, yeah, then, this is the third this is a port of a previous game and the third one in a series and even if this is your first Pikmin game, you could also just look up a let's play of Pikmin three and yeah, or something, yeah. Yeah, it it was just it was very whereas the Hyrule Warriors one, all three of them in it, uh, chatting and all that, there was a lot of new information and they were all like very ecstatic about it and going off. It, it clearly just, it felt it what didn't feel as professionally made, but it felt like the better of the two streams. Yeah, they only give oh, Hyrule Warriors like twenty two. minutes, <laughs> and ah, oh, you died at two, Tris. I died no. at two. I'm, I'm, How did you die? What 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 did you do? Uh, I slid. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> I, I, I slid too fast and went off the ledge I was running. Okay. I'll stop playing. Oh, God. I leveled up three times for that, though. Nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm done with that for now, though. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, any thoughts around um, the Treehouse stream? Do you think they'll do more of them? Uh, any thoughts on what they... If it was a good thing to do or not? I, I, I mean, like, it's fine. Mm. The Hyrule I... Warrior stuff is always interesting. Yeah. Like I, 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 I mostly skipped it because like I, I know Pikmin three and and uh I kinda wanna be surprised when Hyrule Warriors comes out, as stupid as that is. Um <laughs> that. but I, yeah, like I mean I I have no issues against it. <laughs> like <laughs> it might as well exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I, I I really liked the Hyrule War the Hyrule Warriors one because it's like oh yeah we'll show off a, a new gameplay scenario a new map it's like okay I expected it to be like what we saw from Tokyo Game Show for example where they mm -hmm. show the first level of the game and I, I figured that would be it no they gave us like almost twenty five minutes of like three different gameplay scenarios three two different playable characters another weapon style for Link the menus like they gave us so yeah. much that was exhausting to, <laughs> to to look through all of that because i did i did the games play analysis that came up this morning and that took me days and that was <laughs> rough um a lot of fun definitely a lot of good stuff in it and it was exciting and like I, I, as a ui designer i was very interested in the menu and i kept having like people <laughs> talk to me it's like that's what you're interested in i'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I mean, um, Nan, uh, you and I recorded a discussion recently for yes. Hyrule yeah. Warriors, which um, will probably be coming out sometime this week. It's it's the yeah. part two. Aiming the, for, the aiming for tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, okay, that's, yeah, that's the, that's the plan. It depends how much I can get done tonight. That's fair. 
but so that's that's um another thing of like we we really got to like look through that map and dissect it to see like okay where are we going to be going yeah where game? are we fighting now how much of this map is exactly like the first breath of the wild and what have they changed exactly there's, there's a lot of cool stuff yeah I, I don't spoil yourself on hyrule warriors if you don't want to because there's going to be a lot of cool stuff on there yeah yeah, yeah. They, 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 they've got to show off Mifa and Rivali next, so they'll probably do that in another stream in, like, a few weeks. I do feel like the the next few weeks are going to be dedicated to Steve, Mario Kart Live, Pokemon Crown Tundra, and the Partner Direct. And, and then, then Pikmin soon as, 3, of course. As, as soon as Pikmin 3 comes out, it's just going to be Zelda for a bit. Yeah, as soon as Pikmin 3... I could see what Dan said, like, maybe the first week of November they do another Pyro Warriors show-off, and they show off Rivali and Mifa. And yeah. maybe announce a new character if there are any more. And then then they, like, the second week of November announce whatever new game, uh, if they have any more. And then that mm. gives them, like, either a week until Hyrule Warriors. No, then it might be the week of Hyrule Warriors. And then after that, they can just focus. It's really the end of November and December can all be focused on 2021 stuff. Yeah. So, so they, yeah. Can, they can really just take their time with that stuff. Maybe um, maybe Nintendo will pull a uh, a a classic Nintendo move, and at the Game Awards, we'll finally see another trailer for Breath of the Wild too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna get another very minimalist trailer for a sequel that everyone's wanted, and we won't see for another five years. So <laughs> incredible! <laughs> the, 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 there will be a trailer where it's it's like the Metroid Prime Four one, where it's just a teaser showing that it exists. But it's the Bayonetta 3 one, and it's the same as that trailer from before, but what it says is, has restarted production. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, I see, I see uh, Rivers asked me uh, how it's been helping Game Explain out with stuff. So yeah, um, I've been doing some freelance work over there to try to, uh, I, I guess the best way to put it is like up my, uh, up my portfolio, so to say, like continue to uh, brush up my skill set with things. Um, also because, uh, I was offering to help out while they had, like, I think three of them were moving at the same time. <laughs> at, over there, Ash, Andre, and Derek were all moving within two weeks of each other. Jesus. Which was ridiculous. <laughs> Very unfortunately. <laughs> and, 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 and then they had John Lee. <laughs> so, they, they, they were going through a lot, so they were kind of taking some help, so... Uh, I, I offered, and, uh, that's why I've been doing some freelance with them lately, and it's been really nice, actually. Yeah. But, but that but, segues that's the, yes <laughs> into that, that you have segue. an announcement I, yeah. I, I i do have an announcement yes um this is actually my last day here at source gaming um yeah. I, i've yeah. been talking with the uh admins about it uh, i did get offered a job for something uh i can't talk about it yet until uh later this week um but so this definitely not the last of me because as I mean that Nan discussion's still coming out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you'll, this you'll be hearing from in a few out. days. <laughs> um, I'll I'll definitely come back if you guys ever invite me for like other Good Morning Source Gamings or other streams. We did that really big charity live stream back in June, which I'm still really proud of how that went. Uh, so if we ever do any other charity live streams, I will absolutely come back for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I I've spent uh, three and a half years here at Source Gaming. Um, I, I pretty much just before the the switch came out. I think I joined like the month before it came out, so I was there for uh the build up to it, and it's been uh an incredible few years doing this. As as someone who only really got into YouTube because uh at the end of high school I wanted to run a let's play channel with my friends, and we stayed together. Uh, to basically become very heavily involved in game journalism and running channels like this, it's become very surreal and very fun and interesting but at the same time um i i needed to start looking for jobs i mean i i graduated from college last year and uh haven't been able to land too much and i'm getting married next june so i kind of need some money uh so i've definitely been looking into jobs but i i landed something i start this week so uh unfortunately i i can't stay at source gaming and do that job at the same time so yeah, I will be uh, moving on, just like uh, Push and some others did. But I know that uh, the Source Gaming team will stay strong because you guys, we we've we've constantly been doing a bunch of different things here, and it's it's always been interesting. Yeah, yeah, and it's always been wonderful to have you here, Tris, and it's been fantastic three years. Uh, 
working with you on the channel and getting all sorts of stuff out from Mario Party to <laughs> Hyrule to the Hyrule Warriors and Zelda stuff to cover. You you're like you're our big multiplayer guy, <laughs> we he gaming and all that going on. You could you, had, you actually had a group of people you could play things with. <laughs> That's where the list very limited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we are going to be very much missed by uh, both of, both of us on the stream now and the rest of the team. You no, know, you sort of said you goodbye. Although you're still going to be around in the Discord. Yeah, yeah, it's I'll still like, be. In the it's Discord. not like you're jettisoned off the internet forever now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll still be in the Discord, so people can at me to talk about things pretty much whenever. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll also try to be a bit more active in there because I know, and and especially in recent weeks. Um, the only real non-staff chat I've been able to really frequently check in has been the leaks chat, and uh, that's not always <laughs> to do. So I'll definitely chat. try to get in better habit of checking the uh, the rest of the, the the server as well. So I won't be fully gone. <laughs> yeah, you're just gonna be take get, getting the pink the pink uh, coloring taken away for uh, <laughs> shiny gold one. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, blue yeah, one, I can't sure. remember. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's what uh, and and end in the stream on a somber note. But it was, we wanted to save it for save it for the end. You'll still hear Tris in the Hyrule Warriors discussion in two days or whenever or tomorrow, yep. depending on how and we can get if, it done. if you guys end up doing a uh, if you guys end up doing a stream for like Steam and Smash, maybe Cody can bring up his his uh, his Friday Smash streams again. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, if we Just... do a stream or Good Morning Source Gaming where you want to appear on as a guest, like Bush does, then you're more than welcome yeah. to always join us, Tris. So... Yeah, yeah, for sure. I enjoy these. I, I haven't yeah. been able to do it for the last little while, but they also filled up super quickly for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's always there's always a space here. You're always free to come and guest whenever you want. And good Thank luck you. in your next pe line of work. Thank you. Yeah, I'll I. Uh... I look forward to talking about it more uh, in the coming days, and uh, I'll 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 put out like a small, uh, well, not really small, but I'll I'll put out a whole announcement on Twitter too about uh, this, as as I said in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, but alas, alas, we must all move on, and thus <laughs> we're coming to the end of this episode of Good Morning Source Gaming. So I also want to thank all of you guys for listening. I want to thank Dan once again for joining us as a, as a guest for this and yeah um usual i won't do the usual spiel <laughs> that i would usually do at the end of streams and stuff uh just pay attention um to all the stuff we've got coming out we've got a few good things there's a few patrons have um a, a new video that they've got currently got exclusively for them but that'll be coming out later on as well this week and obviously with steve coming out this week there'll probably be more live streams because we'll want to I I will probably stream Steve on Wednesday, um, as he comes out for me anyway. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll stream myself doing spirit battles, or we can all do a big multiplayer uh, arena thing. And I'm obviously still doing Pokemon, which will be on Saturday, and we'll have another Good Morning Source Gaming next week as well. So th there'll, there'll still be plenty of stuff um, for you guys to watch. So just keep an eye out on that, and look for and enjoy the rest of your Sundays. See ya. Bye.